This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Stay where you are, please. Enjoy the show, Milana. We're going to introduce you in about 20 minutes. of love vision let's kick it off right here self love i'm just a kid from chicago yes sir yeah uh-huh where you from Type where you from in the chat. I'm from Chicago. I'm from the South Side. Yes, sir. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Shy Town's very own The Self Love Show, where we say on earth as it is in heaven. And above, as above, so below. Our show is launched right here on YouTube channel. This ain't that network. T-A-T-N. I'm your co-host, Nine Mills. Also known as Self Love. Best food on the planet. What down, shot town What down, what down, what down? Today is Tuesday, Taco Tuesday, as we say here in L.A., um, January 12th, 2021. As always, I want to acknowledge that we can all be any place in this vast universe. And thankfully, we all Scooter chose to be here together. Here together what down what down what down to the co-host what you manifesting today self love love self you already know what you manifest love jay yo how's life on the south side bro hey it is what it is you know got to make the best of what you get make of every day you know, Man. people feed you, feed you lemons. Then you, you know, you make some lemonade. You make some lemon pie. You make some lemon tea. <laughs> yes. You make it happen yeah. anyway. Glad you mentioned tea, bro. <laughs> Big ups to TATN. We like to remind everybody, uh, this is not that mainstream media fix. Um, this ain't that network. Nah, it's, it's not that. This is this. <laughs> Let's hit that like and um, share, subscribe. Uh, we have a really, really um, great show today and tomorrow. So we're ecstatic. Self-love and I, I mean, we're just going to get it going. Uh, today we have our second um, Earth female silverback. You know, to step up and uh, sit with the self love nation. So, uh, big ups to, uh, you know, our sister, the Queen Milana Jackson. You know, she's uh, doing her thing in, in, um, in Hollywood. So, 
Y'all know how we get down. And if some of you have questions, please get those ready. Or, or maybe, you know, you might be aspiring actress or actor. So um, should be a lot, you know, a lot in it for you. What do you say, self love? Man, looking forward to this conversation. I know I say it every show, but every show expands the self love nation. We get this information, and it improves our database. Every single time you watch it, you get something else new. So just so you know, repeat watch and man, you'll figure out something every time. Facts. And if you're in the industry, um, you know, this, this uh, acting industry, you know, acting, maybe you're, you're a writer, you know, maybe you're a producer, director, you know, uh, key grip, right? Yeah, uh, we'd love to hear about it. Type that in the in the chat. Absolutely, and self love sound engineers. I think you got some, uh, yeah, and sound engineers. I think you got some <laughs> some uh, housekeeping, bro. Yeah, bro, you already know. We got a little housekeeping to do, and then you know we got this the foundation of our show, the backbone of it. It's very important to pay close attention, but I need everyone in earshot to subscribe, like, hit the bell. It helps the algorithm introduce us to new people. And we changing the shot at 9,999 subscribers. Yes, we changing sir. the city. Subscribe. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. In entering upon this course of instruction, each of you should, so far as possible, lay aside for the time being all previous theories and beliefs. By so doing, you will be saved the trouble of trying all the way through the show to put, quote, new wine into old wineskins, end quote. Luke chapter 5, verse 37. If there is anything as we proceed which you don't understand or agree with, just let it lie passively in your mind until you have enjoyed the entire show. For many statements that would at first arouse antagonism and discussion will be clear and easily accepted a little farther on. After the show is over, if you wish to return to your old beliefs and ways of living, you are at perfect liberty to do so. But for the time being, be willing to become as a little child, for said the master in spiritual things, quote, except ye become as little children, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven, end quote. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. If at times there seems to be repetition, please remember, the self-love show is a lesson, not a lecture. Yeah, this is what it's all about. Silverback, more growth and development platform. Number one, repair our nation via reparation. We demand our silver back. Number two, to connect our breadwinners with our activists. Absolutely. Number three, show an accurate depiction of African-American Chi-Town. Thanks. Four, to shine a light on positive influence. Five, 
heal our community one person at a time. Six, to provide an unfiltered platform for our influencers. Seven, recycle the black dollar. Eight, to provide mentors for the mentor list. Nine, to close the gap between us and our pink kinsmen. Absolutely. Having the right domain and name can change everything. We jump in I'm registering it, one we for our stuff. Um, great, great um, last uh, previous show. Um, you know, you're going to opt out of the ignorance and opt back into the knowledge. Um, so big up to Knowledge Beckham and the uh, Knowledge Network. So y'all check out his podcast, Dropping Knowledge Network, and the Dropping Knowledge Podcast, Entrepreneur, Savvy Businessman, Southside Born and Bred, Silverback. Most definitely. I expect he wants his silverback, huh, Self Love? Uh I'm sure of that. Yeah. I'm sure of that. Yeah. But don't sit around waiting on reparations. Man. Because if you're sitting around waiting on reparations, you know, you're going to have a few coins in your um, bank account if that's all you're waiting on, if you don't have any other source of income out there. <laughs> yeah. And don't wait on them. Go get them. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Man, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Self, um, man, did you hear about that? Um, Man, it kind of, I guess, I don't know, I guess it's a mental health thing over there. Like, man, it was right off the block where me and Tasia used to stay. Um, went on the shooting spree. What? I did hear something about the shooting spree, but, you know, I don't be checking man. the news or nothing like that. I heard somebody talking about it when I was uh, out, out and about. Man, man, this guy, man, he, like, posted some, uh, start queuing it up as I'm, uh, Yep, in here. Yeah, this guy posted some um, uh, stuff on uh, Facebook and Instagram, you know, um, some obscure rantings, kind of like somebody maybe is off meds or, you know, something of this nature. Yeah. And uh, and then just started shooting random people. Go ahead. Uh, roll it whenever you're ready, self-love. Cut that. Yeah, again... Um, Man, uh, condolences to the family and, um, you know, prayers to all of the victims. That's That's amazing. crazy. That's Bro, they said he robbed a spot and then came back, returned to the spot. The police are there, you know, with the tape and everything. And he started shooting again. God, what the heck? He lost it. <clears throat> He wanted suicide by a uh, policeman. I mean, yeah. he was a uh, skits like he, the, you got to hear his rantings. He, you know, uh, he was hearing voices and stuff. So, I, oh, you know, OK, they're not talking about it, you know. Right. You know what I mean? But he had some post, you know, and he was just kind of ranting gibberish, you know, and pointing his gun and, you know. He made some live Instagram posts, you know, like a few days before he went on this killing spree. So that's, that's sad. Yeah. So much of this is speculation, but bro, uh, you know, we're, we're about tyranny. Um, and so tonight is about, um, you know, the folks who were born and raised in Chicago and, you know, make their way out to, you know, the, you know, behind the curtain, the silver screen, and the big screen, and the, you know, small screen, you know, what have you, whether it be, you know, through what, Vancouver or ATL or um, Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even, you know, South Africa, you know, Australia, England, I mean, 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, so enough of the um, appetizers, uh, bro, bro. And quench my thirst. Well, no, you know, uh, if you could start running that promo video, uh, we'll let that do what it does. And then um, I'll start the introduction and then, you know, we'll go ahead and start this process. and move you downstairs into storage B. No, we, I, I uh, would still like have some new people get, coming in and no, we need all the space we can get. But there's no space. So if you could in, just go ahead and it, pack up your it, stuff it, and move it down there, but no, that would be terrific. I, I, I would know okay. I could stay. You remember me? How you doing tonight? Doing well, officer. Can I see your driver's license, registration, and insurance, please? Of course. My license is right here, my wallet. That's all right, son. Malona plays DEA agent Kim Martinez, who is brought into the action because Philip Locke, who's another new character, says when you boys go to Colombia, you'll need some on-the-ground help. Kim Martinez, even lovelier in the flesh. Don't try to chomp shit on me. I have to say, you know, there's a, a twinge of Milana and Kim and Kim and... than me, which I love. Well, you we better get your brief before you go stumbling into somebody else in the jungle. Not everybody's as warm-hearted as me. I like her. You were... Remember the night in July? Hands up! Hey, 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 hey! Wait, wait, wait! Put the phone down! It's Put that phone! phone. Sorry, right, it's a phone! It's a cell phone! It's, a cell phone. Oh. it's just a cell phone! Right. You knew he was unarmed. Hey, Push in the car and put your hands in the air! Officer, please, he's just a kid! You pointed your gun at him. Okay, get out of the car, son. Easy. He pulled the trigger. Put the phone away! Put the phone away! Put the phone away! Come on. All those fights in high school, it was for something else other than, you know, just being bullied. <laughs> The grand jury determined that no probable cause exists to file any charges against Officer Randall. This is my son. This is my little boy. Please reduce volume, club. You took that from me. The world Thank you. Took that from me. Thank you, dude. That's perfect. Today we make that right. All right, so we're about to get it in. Self Love Nation. We're bringing it to you. Stop. Miss Milana Jackson, proud graduate of Marie Curry High School on the south west side, Boogie. I wonder if you live on the south side, if you live on the west side, when you go there. She did some time at Howard U. Cal State Fullerton and uh, UIC and uh, then close the thing out here on the West Coast UCLA Spike Lee casted her initially in a pilot called The Brick she also but appeared on Dexter. Seen, you know, a minority in so many ways, being a, a woman of color. Cold um, case. There are a lot of soldiers that are out there. Squad 85. Field work. That are some, my military Strike back. Tell me this. We have which was filmed in, in some of the 
South Africa. Motherland. She's got other credits. How to get away with murder. Can go on. But self love, uh, let's put our hands together. And if the chat can give an electronic applause for the mother of the earth. Get her in here, self love. go hey hey what's up how y'all doing great how you doing fantastic i'm happy to be here man it's a blessing have you thank you for coming thank you for inviting me big time uh blessing to have you and uh big ups to you know my lovely wife uh tasia yeah yeah, for uh, connecting this dot. So I just want to give a big ups uh, to her. Uh, for I'll have to say real quick, I have to say this um, publicly. Tasia, your wife was um, one of the first people, if maybe not the first to hire me. She produced this play that I did out in the valley. <laughs> and that's how we met. Wow. Do you remember the name of it? Yeah, it's called Sex Ain't a Three Letter Word. 69 ages to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, somebody's got to believe in you besides yourself, right? Absolutely. You just, absolutely. Absolutely. That that play actually gave me um it gave me some insight about the business because I, you know, usually everybody's like, how do you get involved? How do you get do you get involved? And they're always thinking on levels just, you know, like straight to television. And I, it was just a small play in the Valley. And I actually had some agents, many of us had agents that came in and saw the play. So it's just an example of how you just never know. Yeah, one thing, if you're gonna be in a Tasia production, she's definitely gonna market it and get agents and publicists and stuff like that. She's gonna get you in front of somebody. Yeah. But uh, one thing um, I want to say, um, we're excited about this film. Um, it's a Spike Lee joint, so American Skin. So we need um, everybody to really support this film. And I wanted to ask you, um, when is that? When is the release date? Um, it actually is released nationwide, I guess worldwide, um, the 15th this Friday. But there are limited screenings at drive-ins uh, nationwide, and you'd have you can look that up. I'm on my site, on my social media site. Um, I'm trying to post something today. If you can't find it, you can actually look up on American Skin um, IG's page, and then they have a list of all the theaters that'll be playing the film Thursday. And so in Los Angeles, we actually have a drive-in um, screening out uh, near Chino. So that's mm -hmm. on the 14th. Hey, y'all got me all the way. I mean, so obviously I jacked um, Chicago style five fingers discount. Some of the snippets from the promo <laughs> video, that was literally their, uh, I just chopped up their uh, uh, trailer, which was wonderfully done. So big ups. Um, yeah, but, man, <laughs> <laughs> that looks explosive and um, right up my alley. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a ride that we have. Yeah, because it's going to spark dialogue and conversation that we need to have. Well, and and you know we want to uh, you know just kind of tease that um, because you know one thing we're about the um, self love nation. You know, we want to show um, cats from Chicago in an accurate light. You know, um, we tend to leave our gavels at home and just ask, you know, questions about maybe how you came up. And then maybe that could shed some light on somebody who may be still there 
and um, may have some similar dreams as yours. Um, absolutely. That's part of why I wanted to do this because I recognize that it's important to tap into my community as much as possible in, in every way that I can. And um, I, I, I look forward to this conversation. So where do you want to begin? All right, sweet. And, and you know, you're doing this because we got like, what, 200 and you made like 216 subscribers. So, um, you know, you're doing this for us. It's similar to, I guess, Tasia casting you, yeah. you know, in your first part. So, you know, you know how things go. So there's something for you guys uh, by Black. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For those who don't know, where were you born and raised? I was born and raised on the south side of Chicago. So I have a story I have to tell you. Um, my, my mom actually left Chicago. Uh -huh. Went to Los Angeles, met my dad, who left Louisiana. So he was a part of the migration from Louisiana to, okay. to California, to Los Angeles. So they met there. Um, you know, fell in love, got pregnant. There was an, a family emergency in Chicago in July. So my mom has to get on a plane. She's not eight months pregnant, nine months pregnant, what have you. She oh. gets on the plane and um, has me in Chicago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this family emergency. And yeah. as soon as she could fly back home, it was like I was a week old. She took me and then we went back to Los Angeles. So I was technically supposed to be born and raised, born in Los Angeles. But it was something about God's grace because he knew that I needed the Chicago roots because Facts. I could be born at Jackson Park Hospital. That's what wow. I was about to ask. Yeah. That's right in your backyard, uh, self-love. I could throw a brick and hit that from here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally. Park Hospital, yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so my, uh, my, when my parent, when my mom left, because my mom, my parents got married and then my mom wanted she always felt her philosophy about los angeles is it's a cold city excuse me it's a warm city mm -hmm. with cold hearts and she felt like chicago was a cold city with warm hearts so she needed to be around warm-hearted individuals during that time uh with her baby so she took me back to chicago which was home and that's how i wound up being raised in chicago so when she came back home obviously uh, my mom it was uh, it's an interesting story. My mom was um, actually born and raised in Hyde Park. Um, but okay. my grandmother- Wait lived a minute, in what high school and grade school? Do you know what school she went to in Hyde right. Park? That, yeah, I'm gonna tell you, hold on. This All is right. For not, not, let me finish this, then I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, so my, my, uh, my mom just told me this story recently. My grandmother was lived in a building where no kids were allowed. So she lied, like for the first, my mom, my um, grandmother had three kids. So uh -huh. it was one boy and two girls. So my uncle stayed with some, with the, the my great grandmother. So his grandmother, right. and my, my grandmother raised my mom and my, uh, my aunt until the landlord found out that they were her kids. So they got kicked out of Hat Park. When they got kicked out, they had to go to Cabrini Green. Wow. And my mom was raised in Cabrini Green, yeah. So, but she, it was different. Wow. Was it different then? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was different then. I mean, you know, those kind of regulations, you know, I, I that's a discrimination. And so, yeah, many, obviously in High Park, there was a certain, I'm sure, um, there was a certain level of resident that they wanted to live in there. And this woman, single woman with these kids, did you know that didn't, uh, that wasn't in alignment with their vision. <laughs> Um, and yeah. it, during a time where, you know, she, my grandmother had to figure out where to go. So I'm saying this to say, when my mom came back home, she found herself without a home, obviously, because she mm -hmm. grew up in the projects, you know, um, wound up leaving to go to LA. So when she came back, she had to stay with family. When we finally found a place, it was on 72nd and Stony Island. And so I lived on 72nd. Wow. Yeah, I lived off of uh, Stony, right by the mosque um, until, yeah. I was eight. <laughs> until I was eight. And then we moved to 91st and Bishop until I graduated from high school. Yeah. We probably saw them snowball fighting or something. So, you Man, know, you real know, talk. Us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I live yeah. on like 74th and Euclid. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that, crazy. That, that is. You know, it's it's funny because uh, once you, you know, obviously Chicago is so vast, but it's still so, it's a, you know, it was a dense population of Black people. So everybody kind of really know each other in a yeah. one degree of separation. Yes. It's, just, it's very so, uh, We always say yeah. stop the killing. Stop yeah. the killing us. Yep. Yeah. 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 Mur- murder is suicide. It is because you you know the people. Um. So you kind of well describe what it was like coming up. You know. Um. Wh- so you came up. Where'd you come up at? Um. As you started growing up. So like when you were at Curry. Okay. So well, w- before we get to Curry, I have to uh, I have to include um. A very instrumental part of my upbringing as well was my grandparents, my absolutely father and his um his wife. So it was my step grandmother, and they lived on 126th and Harvard. And so from wow. for junior high, I kind of split time on 91st and Bishop, and then on, on Harvard. So by the time I went to high school, I I wound up going to Julian first. And then I went to Curie. Percy L. Yeah. yeah. Wow. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got you. So. Yeah. Okay. I got you. So. All right. All right. So you came up uh, more like in in the hundreds, um, over towards like Halstead and stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And you went to Julian. Okay. Julian. All right. Yeah. All right. Well then. <laughs> And we can talk about it, like you know, like I'm here. Well, I kind of know. Well, but but tell the, the yeah, world kind of what. <laughs> yeah, at that time, for for a black for a black woman at that time in that area. Um, so, here's the thing. So, when I was okay, so I went to eight different schools. You were a nomad. That's kind of how I am. But 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 so I understand. But go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so. When I was um, when I was you know in first grade to third grade, when I was living off of 70, 72nd and Stony, I went to two schools. When we moved, I wound up going to a school near my new house, which was on Bishop. Um, that school moved, and when that school moved, it was out of the area where we lived. So because okay. they moved, my mom had to find another school for me to go to. So she took me to this other school. These were all black schools. I've always gone to black schools up until the fifth grade. So you're talking predominantly black schools, Christian schools primarily. Um, And then once I got to fifth grade, there was a school near my grandparents' house closer in Dalton. It was a predominantly white school. Uh, It was only three girls that were black in my class. It may have only been four black girls in the entire school. And three of them were, were in my grade and one black boy. And so that was an interesting transition because, you know, growing up on the South side, I was, you know, I, I was nowhere. I was not the bougie black girl. You know, I was, that wasn't me. I was right. fights and, you know, I was very uh, outspoken. I'm still extremely outspoken. I believe in standing up for yourself. Um, I was raised on that, um, that, that ideology that you stand for you stand up for yourself and stand up for what's right. And so going to that, going to a predominantly, a predominantly white school, you then, you know, you then meet the real true perils of being a black girl in America. And I hadn't experienced that. People don't understand Chicago is, is like the South in the Midwest. It's segregated. Mm. Dr. King said it was the worst place he had ever been in his life, but, yeah. but go ahead. It's, it, it's, so you have the beauty of the South where you have the hospitality. Yes. You have, you know, it's like the door is always welcome. You don't ever have to call before you come yep. home. You know, yep. um, people in your business because they want to make sure the family's okay. You know, um, picnics uh, in the- But, uh, but in you the- better be in your neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Even, that's the thing. Even, I was about to even, say before it's preserved. But even like, even have... even if you're black though, like she might have been on one block and then the girls from the other neighborhood, what is she doing in this neighborhood? It, it's so it's segregated. And then even amongst us, our neighborhoods are, 
you know, what are you doing over here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all, I don't remember it being like that when, when we grew up though. I felt like I remember going to parts, various parts of the city and feeling like I was okay. Now it could have just been my naivete. I, I right. respect that because it is different. It's a different life as a girl becoming a woman in Chicago as opposed to a boy becoming mm -hmm. a woman in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's different. Mm -hmm. um, so leaving, having that experience at that school, I'm now, I now go from a predominantly white school to Percy L. Julian. And so I was not, it was not an easy fit. I, and it, I remember my grandfather campaigning that I went to Percy L. Julian, to Julian because it was the closest school to my home. We lived on 91st and Bishop, the, it was one bus ride. And I was in fights all the time. Um, I was in fights uh, for anything, any reason you could think of about a fight, I was in a fight for it. Um, male and female, um, a lot of it had to do with me not knowing how to resolve conflict, which is not something we're taught. Um, me also experiencing things that I hadn't really mentally like, worked through, which was I went to a lot of different schools. So that's mm -hmm. going to impact how you, that's going to impact you socially and how mm -hmm. you interact socially. Um, mm -hmm. I also, you know, went from only the neighborhood boys liking me to going to a high school where it was all black boys and girls. So you had the jealousy issue, which that was new for me. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand right. why don't she like me and her friends don't like me. I don't get it. I just showed right. up. You know, uh, I was very much unique in my style. My mom raised me to, to be a leader, actually. She was like, we do not follow trends. We set them. So I don't care what nice. the fuck they're wearing. You're not wearing that. You wear, you can switch it up, but you ain't going to look like everybody else. So going to nice. a black school where people like to fit in, you stand out, you got issues. Um, so, you know, my mom got tired of coming up to the school. And uh, she had relationships with my teachers and my principal um, from first grade up until I graduated. So she kind of knew how to maneuver in this scenario. Um, but she did recognize that it was dangerous. The school itself was dangerous because it wasn't just like, I'm fighting GD Queens. I'm, there's, you know, this, these are gay. This, yeah. Julian was all GDs, you know, yeah. and then. Yeah. And, and, then, and then and then and then they all knew each other because they fed from the same grade school. So you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of what was a school. Oh God, yeah. I can't remember. Um, but anyway. Trust me, I know. I was a nomad. So I yeah, yeah. Trust me, I know. And then and then if you're shining, you know, like if you're not some gump, like you could you could fit in and not have any problems if you're just some, you know, middle of the road type of situation. But you know, if you're shining and, and doing your thing, then, oh, it's a problem. And now they want to challenge you. And, yeah, well, you know, it is what and it that, is. Sometimes. And, and that's that's one of the things I, I recognize is a part of growing up. Because here's the thing. My mom experienced it growing up. Yeah. She, she said her, her, my grandmother experienced it with my grandfather. My yeah. grandfather had a cut on his eye because of, you know, a fight between two, two girls in school. You know, it's... Yeah. And and my family line goes back for um, to my great great grandmother in Chicago. Okay. So you know my my ancestral line, the migration happened in the beginning. You know it was an ambitious group to to migrate to Chicago and then be there for up until me. You know that's four generations. And so to kind of hear this was it sound it felt like a rites of passage moment for. Girls, you just have to fight your way through um, this kind of trepidation, this kind of uh, this kind of conflict. You got to push through it. You cannot cower down to bullies. They do not understand when you can see. They see it as weakness, and they won't. Yeah, well, you well, know, like this was. So, what, what are you suggesting that the? Because Michelle Obama, she's from you know the South Side, and she says you know when. When they go low, you know, we go high. 
you know? So, I mean, the, and that, no, I'm being facetious because I know it's different <laughs> when you're dealing with teens. It's different. Yeah. When you're dealing with those teens, boy. You have, and, you're, oh. wait, listen, you can, there's a, there is a method <laughs> to this madness. And a um, time and a place. <laughs> we have multiple tools for reasons. You know, they all have different purposes and intentions. And we have to remember that we have to use our tools effectively. Um, because there are people that do not play by the rules. Um, and so we got to just remember that. Um, my mom raised me with that philosophy. So that's how I got through Julia. It was a very, very stressful time. You know, you can imagine feeling but like- But the entire time, like, did it come to some point where, okay, now I'm a senior and these other people- no, I was just there for, I was just there for a freshman year. I was only Okay. There. Oh, no. you got out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. my mom had to pull me out. I mean, yeah. Academically, I did well. That it, the issue was it was socially, and it's wow. like how do you how do you function in this environment and not become a product of it? And aside from that, wasn't Curry like a, a art school? So that's Curry didn't come until sophomore year. So I went to Curry my sophomore year to senior year. And then after that, I what went. was the demographic there? Because I seem to think it was extremely diverse. But yeah, then, like 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 um, Hispanics. So would that be Puerto everything, Ricans? Everything there. I mean, I it was it was Puerto Rican, Mexican, yeah, um, uh, Asian, Chinese, yeah. Polish. Yeah, because when you meet somebody from Curry, they could be. That's how I knew it was diverse. Because yeah, like, I went to Curry. I went to Curry. I went to Curry, and it's like yeah. wow. And everybody... It's like an art school now. It's a school of the arts now. Was it that when you went there? Yeah, that was the that was actually what was the motivating force to get to encouraging okay. my mom to send me to Curry was was their performing arts program. I had done charm school. I was a gift from my step grandmother. She felt like I needed some charm. So I, <laughs> <laughs> you could have sent me to ballet. I was like, that's what, what that's what you want, actually. You want me to, to go to dance class, but it's ballet. But she sent me to charm school and it was I loved it. It was a, it was called Cleo Johnson School of Charm on the South Side. I was stony. I feel like it was stony in 80. Early, I think I forget. I well, what was it that you what what did you take away from the charm school that you didn't take with you there well well at the school i met a girl who went to carry and so she was telling my mom about their program and mm, okay through that is was the end. interesting and then look at you fun. now well that's the you know that's the great scott it's not wow fun. It's on 49th and pulaski that's not near me i was i was in the lottery to go to morgan park and I was, my mom had um, a friend, she had a, um, like a godfather who lived out in the burbs and I was, he was looking into Thornwood, Thornton, you know, he was looking out yeah. there. And so once we found Curie, we knew that, that that would be the ideal program and the ideal opportunity for me to do something that I love. Um, and then I did, and it was still, I mean, high school in Chicago is just, a TV show is in itself, you know, it's full of drama. <laughs> we talking public schools here. We talking like, come on, you get, you know, it you, had, you, it you, had you, an arts program, but you had, you had, you know, my some of my friends lived in Leclerc Courts and the West Side, and you know, it's like people from all over the city coming to the school, and and in that bringing their experience from their environment, and so we still had fights, we still gang fights, it was still race riots, you know, I I didn't get out of high school without having another fight at Curie. It was, it's still a part of not understanding. And this is what I, this is what I deduced. I mean, as a, an adult woman, I understand that the, the mouth, the way you, you communicate and tone mm -hmm. is really instrumental in diffusing something when you're dealing mm -hmm. with the main mind. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're dealing with, mind, when you're dealing with trauma, it, it, it yes. But if it's sane, like I, you can, we can, we can talk through some shit if you got some sense. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have, if the, if you're on, if as you were talking, I heard you guys, you guys earlier talking about the brother 
who did the shootout. You know, if you're tr if you're trying to if you're trying to be logical with someone who is illogical, that's when you have issues. But but once <laughs> I realized as an adult, it was like if I'd have just had an opportunity to just kind of talk about the things I was going through, because that's really truly what we're all yeah. experiencing in Chicago. Because yeah. like where where do we go to communicate our feelings to people? Because we're just historically are taught to not say nothing about anything. And so you're holding on to all of this stuff from family and then your life. So you're carrying these secrets and these, um, you know, this, this trauma from your just being born into a family, just choosing this family, you have that. And then you're growing up with other people with this trauma. And now you're supposed to resolve it peacefully or not even peacefully, maturely. You know, that's something you have well, to learn. I, I say it's a gift and a curse. Like we graduate, I think everyone who comes up in Chicago graduates with a, a degree in PTSD. Yes, and well, you graduates with a degree in it. And yeah, yeah, if you make it, you get a degree in it. And the thing is, is it it's that gift that makes you able to go on the other side of the world in Africa, right? And work with people and own your space, you know, but the curse is, you know, you got a chip and it's some PTSD in there and, and you know, yeah. It, it, the PTSD is, I was looking at um, a documentary actually about that and where it comes from. And you imagine if you are going to bed every night hearing gunshots and it sounds like a war zone and, and you're a seven, how can that not create some form of PTSD once you become 17? Well, that's one of our questions. I mean, were you hearing that kind of stuff growing up in your area at that time when you were coming up over there at gunshots in the hundreds? Um, no, not really, honestly. Uh, I have to say, um, my grandparents lived on a, one of the blocks. And one of the things that I will say, people that don't understand Chicago, don't really know Chicago, might miss is their pockets. And so you get a good block. <laughs> That good block is safe. <laughs> you got you. Yeah, you she's know. talking about a block where there's uh, <laughs> black people who own 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 the stuff. They own like sort of the buildings, you know, and they're renting from family members who own the stuff. This oh. is what she's talking about. That that's <laughs> what she's saying. Ownership, not slave ship. But go ahead. Didn't I hate to cut you off. But yes. Well, okay. I, I wanted to pull in some green. There we go. There we go. But yes, those are the blocks. You know when you're on those blocks yeah 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 so so that, block clubs and yes and, yeah that and, and, and people that come out on the block hey, like hey, what they you doing you, here hey tori hey tori what are you doing yeah. you baseball yeah. oh yeah hey, yeah yeah they yeah. see so people my, they don't know they be like hey uh ooh, problem, who was he right? yeah, yeah. so and so who do who, yeah. who, who who's who did he that? go to what house he yeah. went to let's you yeah. know yeah those are those pockets <laughs> all right but you were saying the good blocks my grandfather my grandfather owned his house on the just like what you're saying but i do remember i do remember when things began to change where where it, and i didn't understand it at the time i just thought people grew up and moved but i it was it was when crack the act crack epidemic flooded the entire um city so it wasn't just like the low-income residences and the low-income communities or the poverty um, filled areas. It was the blocks. And that had more of an impact in my memory than the gunshots, um, I, I have to admit. Now, I will say I heard them just like we all did, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like how it was in some of my friends community it wasn't like that well oliver north like here's my take on it after you know jeff fort larry hoover and all those guys and the other people got you know swept off the street mm -hmm. um the uh spooks the spooks being cia and these guys what was his name oliver north to fund the iran contra um mm -hmm. thing 
they literally started flooding the hundreds in the south side with crack. And I'm not making this up. Those train trains over there. And mm-hmm. I remember the guys, you know, telling us, man, you can come over here and get cereal and get uh, Walkmans and guns. Yeah. And be wide open. Be wide yeah. open. Yeah. And everybody knew. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. That's real. That's that's not some myth. That's no. not some false narrative. That is fact. That's fact. And it's hard to believe that because then it supports what we're seeing today. Yes. You know, yeah. it's hard for people to digest. That's that's difficult to to understand and recognize that the country that you're you're told to believe in um wants to destroy you in this way. Oh, and at the same time, they were telling Tori and us and other rappers to help fill up the prisons. Yeah. They weren't saying it like that, but they were saying, you know, nobody's looking to produce this type of music and you guys are great. The music's great. Everything's good. But no, you know, can you bring some more of that gangster? We need that gangster to kill, kill. Literally. Luckily at that time, Tori and I were older, you know, so and we weren't as thirsty as some of these other kids, right? You know, we had opportunities to do other things, you know, so. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we were able to make different decisions. So um, I want to ask you, though, what advice or information would you give, looking back to your nine-year-old self, just a bit of information that, man, if I had a time machine, uh, I wish I knew that. Wow. I I always think about this question, and I and I never really come up with, something intellectually sound. Um, So I'm just gonna speak from my heart of my nine-year-old self. I was in fourth grade. Um, hmm. So um, because I went to a Christian school, um, the Bible was an instrument, it was instrumental in my curriculum. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to learn, um, we had to memorize the faith chapter, which is Hebrews chapter 11. And what I would tell to my nine-year-old, to my nine-year-old self is this assignment is for your life and not just for this class. Mm. Mm. It is one of the most, if not the most um, important value that is necessary for surviving and thriving um, in life period. Uh, You gotta believe and you have to have faith in a way that is is unshakable. Um, Mm. And that entire chapter just gives you an example, just examples and examples of its value. And say I the chapter again, chapter, please. Chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11. We had to memorize it. Okay. I did not take it. I, mem- I memorized a couple and then it was like, okay, I look at it the day before. That's when I knew <laughs> so I was so gifted. What's, what's, what's the gist of it? It's literally, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm. Or yet the elders um, told a good report. Um, and then there are reports from the elders. So obviously Sarah and Abraham are in there about um, Sarah wanting a child and and what happened when she stopped believing and Abraham had like the stories of um, various elders, biblical er elders and examples of how much faith you need to have, which is just the size of a mustard seed, which tells you how tough life must be. If God is saying you ain't even got to have a large amount of it. It's just got to be this. Have you ever seen a mu- mustard seed? Man. Excessively. That's how tiny, that's how small the amount of faith is. And that could be to succeed and to fail. A lot of but, people. And, and that's to move mountains and walk on water. So how much yes. faith would you have to have to get a job or to get a, um, you know what I mean? So how much faith would that? It would be <laughs> infinitesimal. <laughs> I know I'm not, I'm not familiar with that word, but I would it sound <laughs> about right. <laughs> but self can you imagine though if when you were nine if your nine-year-old if your adult self told you that i mean you would Man. hold on to that scripture you know yeah. so that yeah whole, yeah that whole thing it, it, it yeah that's why we asked that question because could you imagine if your adult you 
you know, because I, I would have listened, you know, and, and whatever they said is critical, right? It's it, it's critical, you know. So we used to watch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Great movie. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen it. That's not the movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, did you lose any childhood friends to violence, drugs, prison, PTSD, alcohol abuse, or, you know, like, you know, people on the corner and stuff like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I was, I used to hang on the corner. I used to, I didn't know that wasn't normal. Right. To come to school and my friend Jock has gotten killed and he's not able to yeah, rest up. go to prom. You know, he's not able to, I'm not able to see my friends. Um, I remember this guy, um, that was, this was during one of the peace movements um, that we had when it was like GDs, all of, everybody came together. It was a truce. Stop the violence type of thing. Yeah. And I remember that particular, that specific friend. Um, Cause I used to just by default, GD family and folk feel. Right. Family. Right. Just right. Yeah. Let's just say affiliation or just born, yeah. born in it. Right. This is it, right? Right. And meeting someone really that's not blood related come and explain the value of the piece and the value of wearing that button and the value of like showcasing that kind of image in spite of all of what I knew just growing right. up and wearing it to school and feeling proud. And um, then, you know, him breaking up a fight, literally pulling me up off the girl and was like, what are you doing? And then finding out he gets killed from gang violence. It was like, that was hard to, to process, but we're supposed to just continue to function like this is normal. Yep. Um, yep. That's, that's, that's residual, that's residual stuff so, that comes so love up. Not, we call it bigotry as usual, but go ahead. Yeah, you, uh, we just... You, we got to get back to what we do and get back to accepting bigotry as usual because that's what it's all about but go ahead yeah no so so these are so these kinds of things were things that um i definitely saw i definitely experienced um you know and listen i have a friend who has lost his hearing in one ear and he you would think you from chicago um, he said he got shot at the college party. I mean, you know, so the yeah. the reality is yes. these things happen outside of environments that we typically just assume um, yes. aren't safe. <laughs> um, and I, when just because my mom moved out the project, my family still lived there until they were demolished. So I was often going to Cabrini State Way you know, hanging with my cousins, you know, uh, hanging with my my friends, cousins and aunts. And it just feels like at growing up at that time, it was just the association kind of protected you. It was a safe, safe haven, like they're cool. Right. Um, you know, they're safe 79th in Marshfield, right off of, you know, Ashland, Ducktown, Inglewood, you know, like I frequented these areas quite a bit. And so obviously, we, I, you know, going into that environment, what to expect. That's just as a child, you know, so we grow up and then there's a new generation in that community. It is you, your reputation ain't, ain't, is gone. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is a, this is a takeover kind of thing. So I, I wouldn't even, I would say having the experience of losing friends and having the experience of seeing this, these kinds of things happen, you then understand that there's life outside of that. And that is kind of what I believe is instrumental um, because you can get shelter in, in the, the prisons that they set up for us mm -hmm. outside of, you know, state. Facts, facts. Um, I want to um, ask you this, as a silverback, um, we call it that because uh, we want our silverback reparations. Cut the crap, cut the check. So 
As a silverback, big homegirl, so to speak, what advice would you give to a young sister, um, you know, that's in Chicago, you know, uh, whopping it up, peeling it up, drilling it up, um, you know, backdooring people, rolling with the guys, or, or considering that path? That's what I should say, considering that path. What, what do you have for them? Hmm. No. I mean, based on this information that I provided you tonight, I rolled with a lot of guys um, that were like my brothers. Um, I had intentions though. My intention, um, my intentions were pure and they saw that. Um, that does not mean that everyone is able to discern those intentions. And so we have to govern ourselves. I always say that we have power and domain of our own bodies, minds, and spirit. And so we have to remember that. Uh, we also have to remember that not everybody was raised. Some kids just grew up, became a young girls, became young women, and then became grown women, but they weren't, or men, but they weren't raised. And so um, we have to usher compassion in this specific instance, when we when we say like, how should you behave? Um, because if you don't have a family and the only family you know are the ones that are hanging on the corners or the ones that live in your building and um, they're showing you what you feel is love, it's hard to, it's hard to penetrate that. And that's happened a lot in our community. Um, some girls and some boys have been taken advantage of because they weren't raised, where they have been taught to not trust their instincts. So I would say to maintain a sense of security over your body is to listen to your instinct um, and, ha and move with purpose because none of us are here to let stay forever. Like we're mortal beings, we will die, it's inevitable. But the time that we're here is supposed to be purposeful and intentional and to be of service to other people. Um, and even in this instance, if I could be a service to mm. a nine year old girl or a 19 year old woman or girl who wants to be a woman um, is, to, is, to really, is to really remember that self love is the best way that you can receive love from anybody else because it's coming from you. A lot of times we forget that. We like look externally for this love. We look externally for this feeling of validation and adoration and approval. And it has to come from within. My mom gave me a lot of tools. I would, didn't, I, I, don't, I can't say I was intelligent enough and prepared to use them. I didn't understand it. I was like, I just want to kick it with my friends. You know, like, <laughs> I just want to go to school and then kick it with my friends. You know, like, <laughs> I didn't understand that I could be powerful at 14 if I knew more about the movement. I didn't know the impact that I could have by being involved with student council. You know, I didn't understand what student council was in school. I didn't understand what you know, being um, proactive socially does to me. I didn't, I knew community service. I knew charity. Uh, I knew my mom taught me integrity. I knew these kinds of things. She exposed me to, to that, but uh, my mom didn't go to college. So relationship building, networking, that all came from her, the jobs that she, um, that she attained through you know, most efforts in working your way up. Yeah. 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 My mom worked for the phone company um, until she reached, hit that glass ceiling. And oh, so she was Illinois Bell. What Illinois they call it? Bell heads or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Illinois Bell. My mom worked for Illinois Bell. Um, and then, I bet y'all had good phones, boy. You, you <laughs> might be living in the projects, but if your mama worked for Illinois Bell, you, you, you had some good phones at the crib, boy. <laughs> Phones. She, right, but I'm, I mean, yeah, but yeah. Work, work for the company. Man, you get a free one every year. They always had something, you know, it's pushing those phones off for 
No, she actually worked in the, she worked in, the, I want to say the retention department. It was in the department where you, where you, she would have to call uh, customers and get them to pay their bill. I forget what the department is called, which, you know, like. Uh, uh, yeah, with, recovery. Right? Yeah, recovery. Yeah. Recovery. Right? Yeah. 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 Nine knows a whole lot about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so she worked in that, in that 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 kind of department. And I actually You know, I, I would have told him, you know, if you cut the phone off, you couldn't call me and ask for your money. But but go ahead. <laughs> I dare you cut it off. <laughs> um, but she did that for a number of years. Um, and so she didn't know like, you know, how to help me get into college. I happened to being at Curie, I happened to um I was doing my work, you know, I was academically, I excelled. I was a straight A student, my GPA was strong. Um, and that just came naturally. And then any other extra pursuits that I had were part of it. So I happened to have great, you know, this great looking, res not resume, but um, uh, application when I would have, you know, applied for Howard, you know, it just looked great. And then it was a student, uh, her name is Ruby. She actually recommended me for National Honor Society. So it was another sister just like letting me know. I didn't know what that meant, but I knew mm -hmm. it was something because it was only two black girls that was in it. And, my <laughs> dad, and right. one black boy. And I was one, you know, black um, male. And that was my best friend in high school. And so kind of showed you something different to reach. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and knowing that it was like, oh, so you know, we, we tell kids, because we've been told, and our parents have been told, just get good grades, stay in school, get a good job. But we don't understand why. There, there's no, there is no, um, particularly now, I will say, um, I don't hear a change in how we communicate. We're using the same vernacular. We're using the same method of communicating to, to generations who are exposed to things as kids that we didn't see until we became adults and we can't rationale. Mm -hmm. we can't, we can't, we can't process it because it's hard, hard to get past the programming. Yeah. yeah it, the, 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 we're, 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 they're, we're, they're getting exposed to stuff before yeah. us, before yeah. we did. Yes. Yeah. They're getting, they're getting exposure and we're getting programming. Like, this is what you're saying. The same thing. Like, yeah, yeah. We teaching, we teaching each generation, the stay programming that we had good, good right. grades and just stay in school and all that and then they get an exposure to other stuff that's you know expanding them the rationale is that this is how you say stay safe and survive um in america not even like how you attain the american dream because that's not even the, the, the path to that it was like this is how you survive being black in america you do these things right and so that in our minds we're like well I, I know people who do that and they're poor or I know people who do that and they, you know, are, they're, you know, struggling with perils that are, you know, seem to be insurmountable. So, so why when I know people who dropped out of school who are illiterate and who are illiterate, illiterate and drive man my favorite car phantoms or, <laughs> ghosts you know, right. right right like whatever right. That thing right. Is, whatever that whatever that status symbol is for a child they are looking at people who have attained it that didn't follow this path true so it's confusing it's like well what am i to believe and then we live in society that perpetuates all of the things that we as a community say are destructive to our people at times you know so it it true. we have to just remember this we got to remember this. And um, I guess in that I'm saying um, staying in school was important in high school, but I dropped out of college. So I had to figure out a method of survival, not having a college degree. And still, I don't have a college degree. And it is something that I recognize um, for a while was challenging for me to kind of push through because I was like, you know, I am i did not go to a conservatory. You know, I didn't go to Juilliard. I didn't graduate out of Howard's fine arts program. Right. I went to 
uh, a number of colleges and just took acting classes, but I didn't have a fine arts degree. So I couldn't even teach acting. Technically, you know, you, they like for you to have at least an MFA if you want, you want to give some kind of instruction unless you open up your own act in school of business. And I didn't really want to do that. Oh, we're smoking. Is it smoke break time? What? Well, the first actors, <laughs> the first actors, uh, they didn't go to Juilliard, I imagine. You know, I always say the first doctors didn't go to medical school, right? So mm -hmm. how but much you, of that do you really you need? Did you, did you hear what I said? Yeah, I, well, we, well, we, okay, we, don't, we, don't, we don't answer questions. We don't, <laughs> that's one of our policies. Um, we question everything. everything. Yeah, but we, we don't, don't answer any questions. questions. No, no, no offense. Anybody. But I, I was gonna comment on something you said earlier. I just here's my question. Can I ask? Can I? Can I partake on my own? Is this? Is this? Well, a... this is your show. Okay, uh, that's, that's how we do it. That's so, all. I'm asking. Okay, thank you. All now, right. Yeah, <laughs> this is your show. So, okay. uh, now where did the spark to uh, pursue acting? When did that bug? Where you really said, okay. Was was it somewhere in college? Was it in high school? I mean, were you really said, no, I'm going to do this professionally and I'm all in? <laughs> um, after I left school, um, I actively pursued it in Chicago. Um, I, Listen, I was putting it, you talk about manifestation. I was just putting it in the universe. I had no idea how to get started. Even going to a performing arts program, um, the high school where I went, there was no tie to an agency. Um, I didn't know the business. And I, it was 97, I booked my first job, which was a music video. Uh, I'd met someone who was doing, who had done, uh, his name is George Brashear. He actually had done uh, soul food. Yeah. And, and um, told my mom, gave her information, said I needed headshots, um, I needed an agent, and kind of gave her the law of the land of how to get started, how to navigate that. And I listened to what he said. I was very obedient in my path. Um, I knew I wanted to do it, obviously, prior to high school. I knew I wanted to do it as a kid. Remember, I was I was nine years old memorizing um, biblical verses like the night before we had to recite them. So it had to be fun for me. I didn't understand. I was like, why do we have to study the Bible? Like, I, you know, I went to church, but we didn't have to memorize whole chapters. <laughs> like, right. You know, so it had to be a part, a process I had to, I had to participate in that was fun. So I began to do these kinds of things. It wasn't until I realized that it could become a career and I could take it seriously. And then that happened after I left school. Okay, so something that was sparked in you younger, but then I guess at some point you got off into like, man, you know, life, life. in Chicago, life right? In Chicago, just go, just, it's one of those things and I, I will, I'm a, I stand by this and I'm a ball in the sword. Words are powerful. Your words have power. And I have, I, I commit, I was like, I want to do this. My mom asked me, I was like, my school, my grade started suffering. Now, mind you, academically, I was sound. I, I, I go from a straight A, being a straight A student, even in, in college, once I Real, I recognize like the kind the focus in college is different because they're not on your ass every day right regarding class or work they could care less if you they, pass or they, fail they don't care especially not at Howard all they care about is this that tuition pay did you buy the books <laughs> did you, that's it. That's it. That's so it. When and if I, you don't make the grade you're gone and they get the next one in there yeah but go ahead go ahead no 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 that's real talk that's real talk. And every school felt the same way. None of them <laughs> had, had a different approach towards teaching their students. And so when I was at USC, I'll never forget, I was at USC and I had a math, I was taking some math class and I couldn't remember none of the formulas. And I remember sitting during that final at UIC feeling like this, the whole 
point of math is figuring out the formula. Like once you get the formula, you can figure out how to solve the, the problem. And I can't even remember the formula. What is going on? And I felt <laughs> that it was the first time I ever failed the final. Uh, I've had many of them exam at U of I like that. So uh, <laughs> who am I kidding here? You get up and walk up to the front. Everybody's looking at you. You might as well have a moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, everybody's the, everybody's like, he's he's done already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm not, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't uh, finish this. So oh, man. I might have just got it. I, I couldn't remember nothing. Man, I knew it when the professor stood up there. Do you understand? No, I understand. I'm trying to be politically correct and not hurt his feelings, you know. And, and then, well, you can go to office hours and talk to people who speak clear English. And I'm sitting here like, well, then why am I at the lecture? But, you know, but some people were getting it. Some people were getting it. You know, maybe it was just me. No, I had too much PTSD on my brain, but go ahead. I'm, I'm well, well, because for me, I didn't see how that fit into my plan. Like, how is this getting me to where I need to go? You know, again, I, if I know the formula, I could solve the equation. Right. And, and so I was like, this is this doesn't feel like my journey. And I didn't want to waste no money. Like oh, I was applying for financial aid and, and get loans or, you know, it's, I, school, it, college is not free, you know? So I was like, this is, how can I be productive? USC is definitely not free. You talk about costly. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, again, starting at Howard and then going there. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm like, so academically um you're now suffering this this f dropped my gpa down i got to see in the class and i it was like i don't want to go to school anymore i want to start working and i want to be an actress and i told my mom that I was very serious um she she believed in me she supported it and once i said it and put it out there it was i had faith Nine year olds on God's path, and it was just it was, it was hard. Yeah. And, so, and literally, it's like things started coming, and mm -hmm. I just had to be present and aware to see it. Mm -hmm. And in that comes everything. So I was getting all kinds of information about acting for jobs that were legitimate and for jobs that weren't legitimate because I'm still a black I'm still a black young woman, you know, mm. and so I'm still prey to predators in an mm. industry full of um, predators. So mm -hmm. I had to be very mm -hmm. cautious and aware of this journey um, and knowing that, you know, uh, it's not something that um, is going to happen overnight. Well, the predation. Um, so were you working, did you ever do anything in Chicago or when you left school here, you just, you know, hit the ground run, running on the um, L.A. acting scene pretty much? No, or you I, went to the Valley and then met Tasia? <laughs> no, I, I actually booked my first film in Chicago called One Week, directed by oh. Thomas, Carl C. Yo, yeah, yeah, Carl, those, those are Tori Sands. Who I actually grew up with to show you how small this world is. Yeah. Is he grew up on 126th and Harvard. I was hanging out with his sister who was- Oh yeah, he sat right here and told us that, didn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 hanging out with his sister no, she, and fighting in their backyard. Like, she said, girl. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking about Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, oh. Kenny starred in it. Kenny yeah, starred in it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I'm always they, they're my sayings. He, he he makes them up. They're Kenny oh, and Carl. Yeah, like, just like, like me and Tori is yeah. Tori Mills. So it's, yeah. <laughs> no, it's all love. It's all love. But yeah, Carl, um, Carl Kenny. Um, I had done some other. I had done some other, and Phil James because Phil's from Chicago. He yeah, yeah, Phil. Yeah, yeah. Too. yeah. Um, through Columbia College, one of the things that I recognized having taken classes at colleges and universities is Columbia College is a school specifically looking for actors. And so I really 
t- tuned in mm-hmm. to the film departments of a lot of universities. So mm-hmm. I used that information that I had. And right. that was like, like, like these students are working. That was kind of yeah, that motivation. this is their mission. This is their this is their dream. And so now I'm in alignment with That's, other not lectures. Yeah. I, like you, you if you're in alignment with other dreamers and you guys have the same dream, then you're going to progress and move in the same direction. But if you're if but that's only if you're in alignment and you're very clear of what that was. And I was very clear. So this is a film about a man who finds out that he may have come in contact with someone who's contracted HIV a week before he gets married. Man. Like th- that within itself is a socially driven. And this was film. HIV when it was a death trap. This wasn't the new HIV with you know. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I, I don't mean to take light of HIV, but this was when HIV was a killer. Before they before they had the treatments and stuff. Listen, I had four cousins die of, of HIV. See? Um, yeah. So it was a film that had affected my personal life. And this is where, you know, when you have personal and professional collide, there's it's bound to be some kind of magic. Mm. What it did was it fostered this mindset within me that this is more than just about being on television and mm. films. Um, this is about um, leaving an imprint in our filmography, in our um, American filmography, specifically Black movies that mm. represent us in a way that we like to see which is um, like human beings. And I love that about that film. I loved working on it. It was one of the films I will say, I remember when I booked it, you know, you, I I am very much about my business. So even starting out, I was like, I booked a film, we have a contract, can you read this? And no one thought that this film was going to go beyond what it did. And I found that that is a very common opinion when it comes to projects with black people they have low expectations and yeah uh cooley high had uh very low expectations but go go ahead yeah it's a detriment to us when we believe it um it's Mm. it's, it can be instrumental because that means that when we do produce art we should really do what we want because if they're believing it in any way right and why shouldn't it be something that you enjoy doing uh, for you, for the sake of you and for the benefit of you. And and I felt like that's what this was. This was the first film for all of us, uh, starring Sadika Muhammad, who's also from Chicago, and Kenny Young, and I, I had a supporting yeah. role um, that was in it. And um, it was my first film, and I kind of took that. It did well in the festivals. The Acapulco Black Film Festival at the time is ABF now, ABFF now. At the time, ABFF stood for Acapulco Black Film Festival. Okay. Um, and so it had gone there and it won and done really well. And so I used that as like leverage to have something to promote myself in California, essentially as well. How, what led me here? I was able to use all of the experience, all of the, the theater auditions that I had because I was doing Black Ensemble Theater. They love experience in, in LA. They love wow. stuff in I, Kenya. I, I did sound for Black Ensemble yeah. uh, for, for a while, you know. Yeah, Especially I worked when on- when they were at Kennedy King. Okay. <laughs> I had worked on it, uh, worked with the theater when they were doing the Jackie Wilson story with, with Chester uh, Gregory. Okay. Yeah. wound up doing um doing on broadway um but at the time it was like it was there and it, it when you're in it you don't know because i was i was working my way up so i'm doing stage management i'm you know understudying you know nobody's give, giving me the stage right when you say i want to act you have to work right. your way up in chicago which is a beautiful thing like chicago gives it believes in labor it respects labor so if anybody is interested in anything and you are doing it, you have a plan, you have a I you in your mind, you see exactly where you want to go, and people see that and respect it. And the ones who don't aren't for you for them to be working with you anyway. So you just let them bypass and you keep going on that path. And I did that. So I was 
auditioning for videos. I was doing industrial films. I was doing short films and I had done um, <coughs> background work. Um, I had my first film audition in Chicago. I auditioned for Save the Last Dance a number of times for a number of roles. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I think, I think my mom was an extra in that or something. <laughs> oh, she had me too. I, yeah. I, was, I was determined to get, be in that film. So I wound up dancing. I went from <laughs> figuring out that if you could just get on set and you can act, actually see people doing it, it makes it more real. It doesn't feel like some fantasy that you can't quite catch. Some lectures, not lessons. Yes. Every time yeah. you near it, it's yes. an actual thing like me holding this bottle of water, you know? Yes. Well, this is why normally, like you take, for instance, you take a family, people with college grads, you know, normally if the parents have it, then the kids get it, and the brother and the little sisters, because it's natural. They just see everybody doing it. But when you're one of the first, if you're the first one to break a cycle, you know, it's, it, it, you know what I mean? If you could see it, you could be it. And I always say lessons, not lectures. You know, it's the same reason why I say, you know, we should spend less time with somebody who's never been an actor um, teaching kids <laughs> to regurgitate stuff they read in a book when the things, like she said, um, she lost um, some friends and family and condolences, you know, to HIV, they can't teach you that stuff at Juilliard. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll tell you you need to process that, you know, but you can get that information on the internet now. Yeah. And I, I feel like you, uh, you say technically, but, you know, your experience and what you've gone through and you, you can teach acting, you know. No, I receive that, but my, my, my teaching comes in a different way. I receive what you're saying. I understand exactly what you're saying. I, I do recognize that there is um, power in academia. Like that's just the reality. It's a, a you know, it's a another badge that you can show to validate that you have the knowledge. Um, but not everybody need that. Is not necessary to teach all things, and art is one of them. I'm I I receive that. I hear what you're saying. Um, being in the state that I am now um, and the journey where I am in my journey, I do recognize that it's important for me to be very honest and transparent that it took some time for me to get here. So if anything, I would say a lot of times we have to give ourselves a break and understand that if we didn't learn, we didn't receive it, when we were, when he gave it to us, it means we weren't ready to receive it. But when we are, then it's our responsibility to move forward, right? And that I had to do the same thing. A lot of my my I have a great aunt and great uncle who were performers. Mm. They, it was their, their name in Chicago. Since this is Chicago, I have to just continue to talk about my my roots in Chicago. Facts. They had Absolutely. a they had a performing um, troupe called Sonny and, and Peppa, and they would perform in lounges in Chicago on the South Side, um, various theaters. What like, you mean, like like at the Godfather or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. They were, um they I mean I I don't know, you know obviously this is my great aunt and uncle. Okay, they so they're older, yeah. They had a comedy record. You can, I can, you can, you know, this was a, they were an, a duo. They, were, they were entertainers, professional yeah, entertainers. Professional yes. performers. Yeah, yes. they, they entertained. So I clearly, if this came from something, my father died a pastor, you know, so this, this in me is in me. Mm -hmm. So if it's in me, it's not going anywhere. And you have to, I had to commit to that. It took me some time to understand that. Do you know what I mean? So DNA, you feel like it's uh, it could be partially in your DNA even? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I have to, you know, I just, I'm giving credit to my ancestors as well as my teachers that currently live on earth. My mom, like there, I had help in this in various ways, you know, in spite of growing up on 72nd and Stony that was rat infested. You know, in spite of that, in spite of the fights, in spite of the journey, 
to get to where I am. Mentally, I had to understand and know that if I just be persistent and I just keep applying what I've always applied my whole life and do the work, not just externally, but internally, just really work on me. And this is where I'm supposed to be then I'm already in alignment. So it didn't matter if I graduated from Howard or it didn't mm. matter if I failed that test because that was a big deal for me to <laughs> fail a test. If you're told to, to do well in school and you Man. do not well yes. in school, it's psychological. Man. Man. <laughs> man. And Especially it's life yeah. or death, you know, when you're in college for, for us, man, it's, it's life or death. Yeah. Listen, my- Especially after you've done well all your life and then you get here and there's some like what the what the hell is this what's wrong with these teachers <laughs> my uncle i'm gonna say this live on youtube <laughs> my uncle was mad that i didn't go to texas university and study chemistry it, it, like that in his mind he was a chemist and he's a very bright brilliant man is very successful in the family right and like, you why would you not come i could get you a full scholarship you could go to school and get a full ride. And I and and this was, we weren't close. This was like, I grew up with this uncle. This was just because we blood and this, he, this was what family does. And I, because I was raised like this was like, but that ain't what I want to do with Man. my, I don't want to study chemistry. It takes a this lifetime for life. most people to arrive at that, you know, to yeah. be able to say, because I'll be miserable every day I, of my life. If, if, <laughs> right. I'm seeing miserable people who right. have this plan <laughs> that decided to do what their mamas told them to do. And their daddy said, this is what you need to do, son. Facts. That's your life. Facts. I was like, that's not my life. No. And I don't regret it. And he, I was like, I had to tell him, I was like, I know you mad. I know you mad. I know yeah. that is it's in your, because he, he was conditioned to believe this is the path. And I had the tools. And so academically, it didn't make, I mean, intellectually, it didn't but make. But that was his path, but it wasn't your path. Exactly. I'm like, I the, the intelligence that you see that could go towards that can go towards a lot of things. That's just a narrow-minded concept, mindset. That mindset is just very narrow. Quick question. There's a restaurant on... 71st and Bennett. It's a pizza place. Have you ever had it? 71st and Bennett. Yeah, Euclid. right off Jeffrey. Euclid? Euclid? Right it's, off Jeffrey. It's a pizza place. You have the Italian place. fiesta. Of course. Yeah. Like, let me just tell you, the taste buds had already started to mm -hmm. <laughs> ignite. <laughs> you said there was that. a little Chinese restaurant across oh. the street from there that wasn't bad either that Jazzy put me up on. For yeah. some reason, he loved Red, it. Red Pagoda. <laughs> It ain't there no more, but Tori, we'd be going there and he'd be Boy. across the street at Red Pagoda risking life with a C rating. And he loved that place. See, that's what got me. I can't do C's. Me either. I saw one of those in Inglewood the other day and people were sitting down that's eating. It was like C minus. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So but for anybody who doesn't know, we're here with um Chicago born actress through what I just found out through a family emergency. And then so she, uh, Milana Jackson, and she is in that role. We're going to talk about that in about five minutes. We're going to get right into American Skin, and then we can wrap this up because um, she's been great and very patient with us. So, um, so you guys, we need y'all to support Spike Lee's joint American Skin, and we're going to run the um, promo video we made where uh, one of the self-loves may or may not have jacked and spliced up the um, trailer for the film. But then we infused it with more of our guests, you know, to make it more self-love show appropriate. So uh, we're gonna run that. And Milana, if you can um, come back in like five minutes, self-love and I will usually just take a quick break here and then we'll come back and um, do the second half, which everybody's been waiting on. We're gonna talk about the movie and um, a few more questions. Okay. Appreciate you. So self, if we could stop her camera, her video, appreciate <laughs> it. Mute. Yeah, I got her muted. There we go. So self, if you can just run a promo video from the top. And then that's uh, what I'm gotcha. Appreciate you. So and then we'll come back and clear the chat new. and move you down 
downstairs into storage B. No, we, I'm, uh, I'm still, I have could some not, new people if, coming in, and no, we need all the space we can get. But there's no space. So if you could in, just go ahead and if, pack up your if, stuff if, and move it down there, but no, that would be terrific. I, I, I was told okay. I could stay. Remember me? How you doing tonight? Doing well, officer. Can I see your driver's license, registration, and insurance, please? Of course. My license is right here, my wallet. That's all right, son. Malona plays DEA agent Kim Martinez, who is brought into the action because Philip Locke, who's another new character, says when you boys go to Colombia, you'll need some on-the-ground help. Kim Martinez. Even lovelier in the flesh. Don't try to chomp shit on me. I have to say, you know, there's a, a twinge of Milana and Kim and Kim and... than me, which I love. Well, we better get your brief before you go stumbling into somebody else in the jungle. Not everybody's as warm-hearted as me. I like her. You would. Remember the night in July? Asia! Hey, 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 hey! Wait, wait, wait! Put hey, the phone down! Put that phone! phone. Sorry, right, it's, a phone. it's a cell phone! It's, phone. it's just a cell phone! Right. You knew he was unarmed. Hey, Push the car and put your hands in the air! Officer, please, he's just a kid! You pointed your gun at him. Okay, get out of the car, son. Easy. He pulled the trigger. Put the phone away! Put the phone away! Put the phone away! And all those fights in high school, it was for something else other than, you know, just being bullied. <laughs> The grand jury determined that no probable cause exists to file any charges against Officer Randall. This is my son. This is my little boy. You took that from me. The world took that from me. Today we make that right. Hear me when I say this, because I'm only going to say it once. Don't. Stop filming. Oh, straight in right in front of you. Miss Jackson, over here, please. Miss Jackson, over here, please. Milana, homie. Maybe you just give up now. Why are we the only people in this country that are expected to do things without violence? I didn't mean to kill your son! I did what you did. I did what I was trying to do! I just want justice. That's all I want. This is your jury. The deciders of your fate. Today, you will be tried for the murder of my son. You had to do Mortal Kombat for real life in this uh, show. I did. I that told me that I made them proud and I felt great to portray a character on television that you've never really seen. You know, a minority in so many ways, being a, a woman of color. Um, there are a lot of soldiers that are out there doing some amazing field work that are some, my military advisors would tell me this. We have female soldiers that are tougher than some of the guys and that's no BS, like seriously, because we have to, you know, you gotta prove that you're stronger and you're faster and you're, you're uh, equipped for battle. And they are, and I met a lot of them last night. So that was a great thing about this show that I never expected to meet people that was that said that I would impact their lives, and they really impacted mine as well. You scared? Are you afraid?
I have a new idea for Christmas gifts this year. Great, Skylar, what's the idea? Say Eureka Africa. Eureka Africa, what's the idea? Say Eureka Africa. I just did, but what's the idea? That's the idea, Dad. Say EurekaAfrica.com. Oh, say EurekaAfrica.com. Say EurekaAfrica.com, where you can get all of your awesome handmade African clothing and accessories for a great price. Great, let's go order now. I just got hooked up by Say Eureka Africa. Yeah, buddy, we are back and we always appreciate all the support from the Self Love Nation. To make please uh, subscribe, subscribe. Self Love is going to get himself digressed at uh, 300 subscribers by a licensed uh, practitioner of hip hypnotism. Regressed. Uh, yeah, I regressed. Uh, so. Um, so we're close. We're creeping up on that number. He's going to get regress live right here on the self love show. Um, when we hit 499 subscribers, myself and my lovely wife, uh, Taja Sherelle, we're going to jump out of an airplane. Big ups. Yeah. You know, right here live on the self love show. It's 499 subscribers. So, um, did you start her uh, camera up? All right. So uh, everybody knows we're here with uh, Chicago-born actress M Milana Jackson. And uh, big ups to Spike Lee on this film that I'm looking forward to um, called American Skin. Man, um, and the premise of it, you know, the, the brother got pulled over by 12 it looked like 12 was jumpy, you know, mm -hmm. 12 was jumpy. And somehow the young man ended up uh, changed. And uh, so this guy silverback this way into a in, in, into something. So it looks like a great premise. But please, I'm going to park it there. Um, I want to get into your role. Anything you can say about it, but not this particular second. Um, because I have to ask you this excluding yourself who do you attribute most um for your personal success my mom linda jackson big ups my mother has never let me quit even when i was caught would call her and leaving how to get away with murder set saying i don't know what i'm doing mommy like i don't know what i'm doing she would never, ever allow me to fall into that. She resisted um, me coming back home. And um, she, she, my mother is the kind of mother who, when I was 10 years old in a dance contest, voted for the other person, okay? <laughs> that mama. <laughs> uh, big ups, big ups, big mom, big ups. It's like Milana was not the best dancer. Milana so no, was not no, the no, best else's kid. If somebody else's kid deserved it. But go ahead, I'm listening. No, I didn't mean to this is, I have that kind of mama who told, tells me when my shit stinks and when that's not my talent and my gift. Um, and when it is, I need to listen. And I did. Mm. And I didn't believe it. Even when I was doubting, even when I thought she was wrong. She, mm. I, she, yeah, I give it to her. All right. Well, they say that, um, most people love the truth when it, you know, shines favorably on them, but they have a strong disdain for it. You know, when it <laughs> illuminates their warts and pimples and stuff. So, <laughs> um, share a personal situation. Uh, well, for you, since it's movie related, can you share a personal situation like a twelve horror horror story, or even a um, positive interaction with twelve? Uh, that's Popo, the police. Um, 
and um, how you may have handled it. My relationship with the police began as a kid of a mom who had a lot of male cop friends. She was a single mother. So, you know, I saw cops as from a different perspective. Um, I still didn't want to ride in the car. Um, I remember my mom had a friend, <laughs> officer who would, she would, she would, he would drop me off at school and I would cry. I didn't want to sit in the car because I was like, they going to think I'm arrested. And my mother would be like, but you a kid, Milana. And this was because my mom wasn't aware. Um, she, she, you know, this was, this was friendly, a friendly relationship. So there, um, he, he was looking out for me, but I still kind of felt instinctively that I, I would be perceived as a criminal because I'm in this car. Um, I didn't. Or a snitch. That. Yeah. <laughs> that's your bigger worry. Yeah, that will see that. That's what I think about now. <laughs> yeah. It's a bigger concern in the community. Listen, listen okay, let me just. What's she honest. talking about in there? <laughs> <laughs> Why is she looking at me talking to him? You know? Yeah, what is right. going on here out there? I have to say this. I have to say this. I would I would not be honest if I did not say this. That I was a tattletale growing up. Oh. <laughs> oh. The tattletale. I was the You see why we you see why we don't answer questions? <laughs> <laughs> this is why. Hey, but, won't play but, with me. Go ahead. <laughs> Here's the thing, no, I, I do, I will say, I recognize that because my mom instilled in me the value behind using my words. You have mm. to, as a girl, you have to understand that there are times when we have to speak up and we have to say that someone is ex exposing themselves in a way to me that makes, a way to me that makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, my mom was very transparent with me. Growing up, she had to be, um, she had to be transparent with her daughter because she knew that they are predators and you have to protect your, the youth from the predators. And so my body was something that she made me very aware of was my domain. And so I had to learn that it was okay to tell. What I also had to understand where there are times when you shut your damn mouth. And it was just me understanding the, the, the value behind um, exposing the truth when it's mm. detrimental to other people. Yeah, we say uh, uh, silence is violence. That's, you know, one of our uh, tenets, you know. So, you know, you see something, <clears throat> say something, um, but then at the same time, um, yeah, you definitely got to know when yeah. to be quiet. But 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 that is that is a very transparent reality. Correct. Get, getting justice. Your because your instinct is telling you something is not right. Correct. And, and then if it's if it's the kind of secret that could you know result in there being repercussions behind this information coming out, that's a heavy weight for a child to, to carry. That's very heavy. And so if you're growing up with this heavy weight, that is not even your responsibility. You just happen to be exposed to it. How do you function in society with that? You've now been told to lie to protect other people which is a part of what I would say grow, as, a, as a woman. This is why a lot of women don't- Our first women. female guest grew up in her area and she went on a rant about people exposing themselves and stuff like that. That's crazy. That's two for two. I didn't even know that was a thing. It's in a the, thing. You know, in a hundred, you know, that's what I'm saying. As a man, like one thing I've been coming to, you know, as I've gotten, you know, older and, and less ignorant. 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 Tito, he ignorant. He's so ignorant. That's the house I grew up in. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I've, I've you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough as a black man to be aware of your male privilege. Yeah. And, and, 
it's, I'll, it's, I'll, it's, I'll, it's, I'll, it's it's not being a tattletale, getting justice. Getting justice is not being a tattletale. Like okay, yeah, doing I'm, exposure and all that, just so people know that. Yeah, uh, true. Uh, yeah, but we we have to understand, but that's that's where the snitching, that's the the gray area when it comes to snitching, because that's what it is. I'm 14 and Julian. I'm 14. I'm in French class and an upperclassman pulls out his penis in front of me in class. Oh, and I had to, I didn't know if I was if I was that's I had to say something. Cause I didn't understand this. This was not something that looked like was supposed to happen. I was supposed to be learning French. The teacher gave me a D in class. He's thinking that I'm not engaged, not understanding I'm being assaulted. And Facts. so what do I say? How do I handle this? This hey, is the kinds of things that even I'm realizing even in my- Yeah, but if she's saying something to a male teacher who's not aware of, yeah. you know, that's the thing. That's so, like, I to, so I had to go to the principal. Like this had to, this had to be, so I am literally like, I, listen, I was watching The Wire at season four. Yeah. Looking at Randy and seeing myself in some way similar in terms of the, his whole storyline of this character for this boy was that he revealed information and was seen as a snitch. I'm revealing information about this boy exposing something. No, no, that's see, 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 the word snitching got kind of bastardized the term right around your generation. I mean, we're same generation, but your age group. I mean, you know, seriously, um, a snitch is okay. So for one example, you got the black Panthers or some community organization that's in the community and they're actually doing things that are positive, right. You know, for the community, you know, um, protecting women when they pull up on the block, like some of those good blocks you talked about, you know, making sure people aren't getting robbed and not breaking in their house. So now you have these groups and you have organizations who might want to bring these types of groups down. It could be the police, it could be the government, it could be the powers that be. Snitching was originally when you were turning in someone to the government that was working as part of the movement in our community. Now it devolved to mean, okay, self love and I are all knowingly committing a crime. I get caught. And so that I get favors or what have you, or because I can't shut up, I start, you know, telling everybody else and naming everybody else and showing up to court. Not, and I can't get, you know, time. that's snitching. Now, now these, these people, these morons, for lack of a better term, because I don't like to do that, you know, we vibrate love. They've made it mean, you know, I'm sitting here and somebody's attacking a woman in the alley and I get the license plate number and I show up to court and I say, that's his license plate of the jerk who attacked this lady. And now they want to call me a snitch. And if that makes me a snitch, then, you know, look at me, world. I'm a snitch, you, you know, because, because to- I got two choices. Yeah. I can kill. Go we ahead. have to protect ourselves. That's how we protect ourselves. Yeah, You're absolutely right. You have to protect yourself in this way. You have to. That means that those that are coming to steal, kill, and destroy are not a part of the program. Because they can attack again too, and yeah. that's right, right. So if they're not positive in the community, for you guys, that's not snitching. You know. Um, I mean, I, I know it's tough. I've gotten into arguments with people and a lot of people don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying I'm the cat calling the police. I'm not caring, but I'm right, just right, telling right. y'all that that's, that's what if you're I, a victim and you're testifying. Yes. You're not snitching. No, no, unless you're a gang member and y'all were having gang beef. And then you called the police and said, <laughs> you know, that guy shot at me. Yes, that's snitching because that's a code, but most of us don't live like that. So, um, yeah, so but just it, wanted to go off on that. Woman, but as a woman, I, I was, what I was saying is, is that, is that, that ideology has spilled into, into reporting violations of self. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying is you do not tell anybody that you mm-hmm. were violated by this person. You have to protect this person and not you. And so that it, these are the things growing up in a psychologically could be devaluing yes. you in your yes. own subconscious. We have to remember, yes, 
We have to remember that. And that's where the, we're ushering in compassion helps because this PTSD doesn't just stem from being exposed to the environment externally. It's internally un, in the house. What's going on under the roof? Because mm. those things also have an impact. Yeah, we have the violence outside, but if you're sheltered, you know, if you're quarantined in an area that it is uh, sterile, you know, you going to church and or my, my half of my family, majority of my family, Jehovah's Witnesses. So, you know, you go into to the hall or, you know, you're doing the, your program thing. And so that's your escape. That's different. If you're in the house where the violation is occurring and you're told not to tell anybody, that's a heavy burden for a child to carry. Yeah. For anyone, but especially for a child, because who do they turn to? Like, what do they do? Which is your original question about 12, as you say, you know, the, what's your experience with that? My experience really was at the time my mom knew she could call her friends who were cops in the time of need. And in spite of that, I do recognize the shift because a lot of those men have retired and they have revealed yep. the things that we are seeing on television. Yeah. 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 So, but this kind of brought me into a question. How does being a black woman affect you um, in the business? The same way it affects all black women in this business. Um, <laughs> um, it's not personal. Um, it's the business isn't was not by design to showcase and highlight us. Um, that's the reality. We have to remember that, and that is the truth about most most businesses, um, unless they see it as being profitable. Um, and then, it, what's the intention behind that? Um, I think it sees me as a strong black woman, which is why a lot of the characters I play or that I get auditions for are strong women. Um, it sees me as, uh, it sees me in a different way. I, 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 I'm Chicago through and through, right? Even when I was in Chicago, and this is just the truth. I never worked really in Chicago. If it weren't, if it wasn't a student film or the independent films, I didn't get jobs. They didn't feel I was American enough. I remember doing an industrial film audition for the film, and then the, that's an interesting <laughs> term. Go ahead, though. Sorry, I'm going to explain. That's industrial. okay. An industrial film is a film where a corporation has a certain amount of funds allocated towards training. Uh, uh, programs mm. and so those programs are usually like videos and so you know if it's to implement some new uh, policy if it's you know like hospitals do it if they want to sh show you how to how to um, vaccination do, policy for instance well no 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 this this is like how to diffuse a confrontational situation between uh, a woman who's just had a child and the baby mama. And so we would, we would actually go to the, the, uh, to the, uh, facilities to the play to the <laughs> play, play it out and play it out. <laughs> yeah. And so like, really? yeah, this is, yeah, this is real. <laughs> so like, uh, I, I was the, I, I was love the, doing that. I was the baby mama. Um, <laughs> Erica Hubbard, who actually was on, on Lincoln Heights, played the, the, the new mom in the hospital. And then there was another actor playing the father. And so we okay. would just improv a scene. Right. You know, live in front of the staff. And someone would come in and kind of direct and say, well, this is how you diffuse the situation. You know, you, you, this is how, as a staff member, you handle this confrontation. Um, oh. <laughs> that, that kind of thing can be recorded for companies and distribute it just internally with the same kind of idea of, of showing a new policy. And so those are called industrial films. And because Chicago is very corporate, that's, that was, a, there's a lot of opportunity for that. But when I would audition, they felt I was too Chicago and they wanted me to be more American. 
And so I feel like the industry sees me as being this very Southern woman, um, even though um, I am very much aware that I have a city edge to me, mm -hmm. can't quite navigate that. So I have had to be malleable in my walk and in my journey and find my way to show them how to see me, which is how I believe you have to be if you're black in this industry. You have to show them because they see you one way and that's just, oh, that's that kind of black girl. Mm -hmm. um, that's that kind of black woman. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the more refined and assimilated you can project in a character, the more opportunities you may have. Um, and, and that's just business. And it's sort of life because you don't know how many people walk up to me. Hey, are those dredge real? If you take your hat off or, you know, they think I'm just a happy roster man and I'm smoking all the time and some of it or most of it may be true. But, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But how dare you? you know? <laughs> but what yeah. does that mean, too? Like, you know, the reality is, is that, that what are the preconceived notions that come with that? <laughs> what, what, OK, so if you are. So now what? What does that right. mean? Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly. What conversation can really happen. True. Um, how have you utilized your South Side Chicago upbringing? How do you think that this may have helped you um, in life? Hmm. Um, tenacity. Hmm. Um, I the scars that I got growing up falling, just literally, literally tripping and falling. Um, kind of represent the journey is that you will fall a lot and you got to get up and now so the scar could be a reminder um, that you do heal like we heal so we don't have to worry about falling because we'll some something or someone will catch us um, it's just about getting up and I learned that in Chicago it is a labor town that respects hard work and labor um, Man. And so that's necessary to forge any kind of career, particularly one that's not that's based, this opinion based, you know, the public kind of dictates the rise um, because of what it's fed. So if it's fed to eat McDonald's, then there's a likelihood that that's going, going to be dinner at least once or twice a week. Um, that's the reality. Well said, well said biggest mistakes that you see um, from actors? And I'm not putting the sex on that. Thinking it's an overnight thing. Thinking that it, you know, it's that the, oh, the, 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 the things that we see are usually the exceptions and not the rule. So the rule is, you know, it takes about 10 to 15 to really have an impact. That's the rule. I knew that when I came to LA, they were like about 10, year 10 is when you hit your mark where people really kind of know who you mm -hmm. are in the business. And that's hard for people to understand, mm -hmm. get it before year 10. And it was, I was one of those actors that was hard for me to comprehend um, the journey uh, idea came from Spike Lee. He was like, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And he said this before we worked together the first time. So um, that was something that I needed to experience to understand and really believe. And then saying like, oh, it is a marathon because my life isn't over. I don't, I didn't say I'm only going to do 10 films and I'm out. Or I'm only going to do you know, be on TV. I'm going to hit 50 TV shows. Like I didn't come with that kind of goal. My goals are lofty, much bigger than that. And so if that, if I already know, if I already know I have it, I already know the role is mine. I already know that I am where I, I'm supposed to be, not where I want to be, but where I'm supposed to be. If I already know that, then that relieves some of the stress and the pressure. And in this business, you have to believe that because we have a choice. Like I could leave any time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I met, when I met uh, Milana, she was, I don't know if you were living in the Valley, but you were on Scandal. 
at that time? How to get away with murder. Was it how to get away with murder? It was how to get away with murder. I thought it was scandal. Okay, my bad. I received yeah. that. I mean, scandal's off the air now. So, yeah. it, it, you know, unless they do a reboot, I've never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not a, a, a TV guy. You know, for the most part, you know, I really have to know like somebody who did it or or, you know, just something, you know, spectacular. You know what I mean? So that's just for me. It's not you're not you weren't necessarily the demo, the demographic for that. For that show. How to get away with murders. I was. <laughs> yeah, because all I want to do is just stick a Kleenex through the screen every time I'm watching that one. Like, man, just somebody passed this lady some Kleenex. Uh, big up stuff. She be doing her thing, man. She yeah, that's what is open. We can't. You can't help what happens. Odds not too. Is that's you, fine. But if I'm the I'm other actor, I'm here's what I'm. I be. I be telling Tasia like, all right. So if you, I'm not an actor. Everybody knows that. <laughs> but self, if I'm doing a scene with you, right? You know, I'm telling you some bad news, whatever, and you're just acting and snots coming out. It would think seem like most characters, most human beings, would be like, hey, you want to wipe your nose? <laughs> no, when when I have to me, I've never had anybody unless it's my therapist or my mama say here's some tissue. <laughs> yes, and they let you sit they there. Don't with it. That no, they don't. I've, I, yeah. Well, she's saying she's saying actors don't. Right. Oh, 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 I'm oh, saying right. in real life. I'm talking. That's what I thought about. she was oh, saying in real life. Uh, That's no, what I yeah. thought she was saying. That's you what see I'm this? Like, what? No, I'm like I'm not gonna sit here and watch this lady <laughs> snot. You know, no, let me turn hey, my back. Watch you, snot you, all over herself. Take care. It's it's a. Yeah, let me turn my back. You I might gotta know, eat tonight. You might not you know, I want to eat tonight. I don't want to think about this. Might want to take care of that. Uh, you but, know, you know, teach his own, teach his own. <laughs> um, I, any I, that would I'm talking about myself. That happens with me, so I can't even. I have nothing to say to that. But just know that rare few times have people handed me a Kleenex. I just need you to know that in real life, it's few times when people will say, "Here, why?" Wow, wow. It's That's just, I thought that was a Chicago thing. Let me look at what are you doing? What are you looking for? I'm looking for some Kleenex for God's sake. You got stuff going on that. You know, right. people's nose run on the bus stop and folks because it's cold outside. Yes. And so if I'm standing there and hey, you want some Kleenex, brother? If I got it. Take this. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true. She's right. All right. Well, any myths, uh, we do this one any myths about the industry that you'd like to clear up yes. yeah I don't, know if that, is that my, that's, uh, I don't know if i feel responsible for clarifying any myths um i don't know Vinny. i can't what would be a myth be you have to tell me the myth I, none come up none pop in my head right now no myths pop up right now all right um, any family quotes, scriptures, words of wisdom, uh, maybe your mom shares or, um, you know, that you hang your hat on? Yes. Um, my mother's philosophy is there are people who are for you. There are people who are for self. And there are people who are against you. And you have to know where to place those people. Mm. The people who are for self aren't against you. They just have no capacity to be there for you because they're only focused on them. Mm. So if I apply that to my friendships, my, my relationships, it helped me to process the ones who expired before I was willing to let them go. That reminds me of the quote I came up with a couple of weeks ago. Um, okay. um, the, the, what is it? The proton... The proton will never understand the electron, said the neutron. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense somewhere. What's your uh makes perfect sense? What's what's your take on Black Lives Matter? It's necessary. All right. Now we are um at the film American Skin. Um, what's your role, um, in the, in the film? And can you tell us like how you got involved in the project? Like the Spike reach out and say, man, I remember her from, uh, the brick. No. And did you tell Spike that the brick is a, <laughs> that, that people in your family would be offended by calling them the brick, but go ahead. 
Back to <laughs> I digress. No, that didn't happen at all. Um, that's the myth that I want to dispel. <laughs> that's how this industry works. It does not. Okay, well, good. See, there we there go. go. There's a myth. Sweet. <laughs> okay. They don't call you from 15 years ago and say, hey, I got this well, part. Nate, no, Nate, actually, I worked with Nate in 2008. And um, I actually auditioned and was up for Birth of a Nation. Uh, I was shooting Strike Back at the time um, and then didn't get that and then was offered this. And so that is how the relationship benefited me getting it. But I had to continue to work on my craft Facts. as well as cultivate my own relationship with this Facts. business because people like to work with those that they trust. That's a real mm. thing in every business. You, know, you have a lot of lives and livelihoods on at stake here. You know, the business is you a- You can't be not showing up. You can't be not showing up. You can't be late. You can't, you can't. Listen, they can't, you can't. You can't, right. You cannot. You know how much so money they pay they for Whoever they are that's doing it, I have to just say this. Whoever they are that's doing it, ain't you. <laughs> For a long time, for a long, and even even like say Denzel Washington, he he wouldn't even show up late. No, you know what I mean. No, right. You can, you see, although he could, although he could. But but there's a reason that people really do respect. Because he earned those relationships, and you're not going to blow those relationships by just wasting everybody's time and disrespecting people. Because people's time is valuable. We're, we, you know, we only get a certain amount, all of us. And we just remember that we only get a certain amount of time, all of us. Every human being only gets a certain amount. And we don't know how, how long or how much of that time we'll receive. And so with the time we have, we respect other people's time and see it just as, as a, a value. You, you, um, you reap the rewards of that. You, people appreciate that. And that involves working and having a career and having a relationship and knowing that if I say I'm going to be here, that person expects me to be there. Damn. Not at least communicate because things happen. Listen, things happen. I have gone, I, I had an audition for this film. Um, I had locked my keys in the car and all of my stuff, my, um, my uh, phone, everything. You, uh, no, headshot. That's what I'm trying to think. Okay. Uh, material that you need for the audition yeah. was in the car. I locked it because I was so anxious to get to the audition. It was yeah. at the Chateau, Chateau Marmont in, um, in Hollywood. Uh, so it wasn't a traditional uh, casting office. I locked my keys in the car. I was like, I have to go to this audition. I had to focus. I had to be there at a specific time. I couldn't worry about that. I've had um, accidents on my way to auditions and recognize that when things happen, that's when you communicate, you call your agent, you call the person that is vouching for you and let them know I'm okay, I'm in route, but this happened. People understand that things happen and they receive it when it's genuine and obviously it, um, it's uh, something that's unexpected. Um, and so that is important in this business particularly. I forget your question if that answers. Well, no, that was great advice too. And you don't wanna be, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can't be, that can't be you all the time. You don't want to be Richard Pryor out there, you know, always <laughs> calling and with a story. But if something is happening, something is happening. And people can absorb that when it's uh, genuine because it's going to be rare. Yeah, it's going to be rare. That's how you know. <laughs> right. Because, listen, like, unless you're just that person, then, you, then that's just, uh, you need to contact the therapist because you really do got some PTSD in the, the cloud and you're attracted to the energy. <laughs> And that is that is a real thing. Self sabotage, fear of success, fear of failure shows up in these kinds of obstacles that you set up. And you don't even realize that you're doing it because you don't believe you're worthy of receiving it. So you're setting up these things that are stumbling blocks, and you're not understanding that if you just pivot, present, you can walk over that and miss that. Right. Yeah, you're exactly right. Cause, uh, man, life happens. 
Life happens. And so, making plans. Facts. Go ahead, Tori. You was asking something? Or, uh, no, nah, I was just stating, you know, she came in and you came in. All right, well, break down to us um, the role you're playing um, in this big film, American Skin. American Skin, I am playing the mother and the ex-wife, wife to Lincoln, who is Nate Parker's character who directed the film. Um, I saw her standing there, excuse me, and she was looking like she had the cat in the bag when her character was standing there in that little snippet. And it was just looking at me, and I, I don't know anything about the movie, but it was just looking at me, so if, like the mom has a lot more go-getter in there and has a lot more, like, like I don't know what she's going to be saying, like, publicly. <laughs> like, she might even be putting that work in herself. But go ahead, didn't mean to cut <laughs> you off. Go ahead. That's okay. Yeah, I, um, it's a, it's a, um, I I wound up reading the script. I saw the intention behind the story. I was um, on board with talking to Nate about the character, how I, what I would like, wanted to, to contribute to this story. And I'm playing a woman who has experienced losing their child to the police. Um, with that as a very heavy burden is something that many Black women, particularly in Chicago, have experienced. And so I represent their position in America, uh, which is feeling as if there's no one who is there is no one there is no one who is representing them not getting justice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, uh, there was a theory in, in the Willie Lynch, you know, philosophy, um, I guess they would castrate and, you know, but break the, the, the biggest males and, you know, the most alpha males of, of black people, you know, on the plantations and, and they would do it literally right in front of the women and right in front of the mothers. And then somewhere in the subconscious, the women now are raising the children by any means necessary. Don't be in that position. And you're either getting butt broken psychologically or it's happening physically. What would you say to that? Absolutely. That, um, that's a conditioning um, that re, it, re, um, it, it gives you a different perspective of hierarchy because um, it goes against our whole tribal makeup. Like we respect our matriarch. Um, we respect um, the king who's on the throne, just tribal. We were just talking about just in terms of our ancestral tribe right um, these things have value we respect our elders um, you start breaking that down and you start minimalizing the impact of what a father figure would have on their family and you strip them of their dignity and, and their manhood or emasculate them in some way to project your power over them, it'll have an impact on um, the entire family psychologically and then like a virus, it'll spread. That's an intention. Um, you know, there's a reason that many of us women um, feel like, you know, we have to compete with men. You know, I, I used to feel like I had to compete with men. That means that automatically I am seeing them in opposition if I'm competing with, mm. against, whatever, you know, word, whichever is interchangeable. As mm -hmm. There's a, you know, level of opposition there as opposed to we're going to win collectively. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's a different mindset. But where is that learned? Because you didn't learn that in charm school. So what do you think? I definitely didn't learn that in charm school. Right. So what, 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 where do you think that 
you know, came from? I did a lot of work. I, I did, I went, I've been in therapy. I took, I was in therapy for a number of years talking these things through. I remember yeah. when I was in uh, high school, I have to give credit to a teacher's name is Mr. Woodrow. The curious, he um, has transitioned. Um, and I yeah, remember up. meeting him. And when I say meet, literally I'm walking down the hallway and he and another black teacher are there and we meet in the hallway. Mm. Serendipity. God knew this was somebody who needed to give me some information that was necessary, even for this moment. And he just get, he asked me about what I what I what I wanted to do with my life, my future. We were talking. It was Mr. Woodruff and Miss McCowan. Um, I feel like Mr. Woodruff taught, taught humanities, I think. Um, and I told him I wanted to have a kid. And go to go to. Uh, I was going to Howard, um, and in my dream, no a man wasn't even mentioned. Like no partner, no nothing. So mm-hmm. he chimed in as a father and a husband. He was like, you know, I know you as a student. We haven't actually had a class together, but I know your mama, <laughs> and as good of a job that she could do raising you as a single parent. Imagine your life if you had an additional asset of mm. your father. And it was just something in my mind that I hadn't even considered because I had my, it's not like my father had was deceased. My father lived in Los Angeles. So our relationship reflected that. Um, so when he posed this new, this new concept of a dual parent household and the value of that, structurally the impact that that would have on me and my life growing up and it opened my eyes to things that I hadn't seen and I had my grandfather but he had also died that year so I didn't realize the impact that that had on me and the impact that having uh, a just a, a presence period of that kind of um you know that kind of very traditional old school you know, mindset, like, you know, being raised by your grandparent is different than being raised by your parent. True. Thanks. So it's a, it's a more patience and wisdom. Typically. Yeah, but also more freedom because they, they didn't birth you. <laughs> Correct. You know, they don't have to run behind you and chase you. They're, they're like, my words are enough. And listen, you ain't my child. So if you want to, you know, correct, you know, I, it's it's just different. It's not a negotiation with your grandparents. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> and so, you know, I, if you want if you want to live the rest of your life in prison, live the rest of your life in prison. But, but uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Because 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 again, the grandparents is like, well, it ain't my child. I I that ain't my baby. You know, I'm the grandparent. You know. Um, but just hearing these, these things, these seeds, um, these valuable perspectives, um, and doing the work internally helped me to deduce that this is a necessary way of life for me to just see things, um, more clear, um, and, and again, intentional. And rem- remembering that, because it's easy to forget, it's, especially in a, I live in a land of make-believe. You know, even as beautiful or as realistic as these TV shows look, there, there's no ceiling. You know, it's not, it's a set. It's, these are actors. These are- I've always noticed that even when I was a kid, because they'd be filming and then they'd go right through the wall. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute, how'd they do yeah. that? It always ruined it for me. <laughs> they keep doing that. Like, yeah, they, they do that. you that this isn't real. So that <laughs> their story is you, you, you're still entertained. <laughs> I, I guess so. Well, yeah. This is, a, this, this, is, this is for entertainment. And hopefully you get Facts. education in the entertainment. That's the beauty. That's, you know, the, the goal, I'll say. Well, I wanted to ask you, um, your character... Um, is she remarried? And then can you say like why they split up or is that telling the movie? Um, no, no, I 
I did not remarry. She has did not remarry. Um, the love is still there. It's the relationship like most where in, in spite of what the papers say, the documents say, the love is still there. The Do they have dual citizenship? I mean, uh, <laughs> what word am I looking for? I've been watching so much MSNBC, man. They got me on the board of crime for these kids down there. Uh, what is it? Dual custody. Do they have dual custody for the kid? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, I, I don't want to get, you'll see. I know. All right, all right, all right. All right. What did you learn, uh, if anything? I know a lot of uh, thespians say they learn from uh, different roles. So uh, did you learn anything from this role? Or the yeah, process? absolutely. I, I, I have to say, when I came to LA, I was adopted adopted by a woman named Tracy Lee, who um, worked for uh, this family that I used to work for. And um, she had lost her son to the hands of the Inglewood Police Department. And there was a void that I saw when I met this woman that I had, saw, I had seen showcased back to me um, through the eyes of Mamie Teal, which is a Mamie Teal mom. Mamie Teal's mom. Mamie Teal's mom. Yeah. As well as- You know, I actually tried to put her, real talk, uh, one of our brothers knows her, um, one of our old school noobs. I mean, literally wrote the story, had the rights and all that. But I I had Oprah involved and everything, but these are years ago. But I, I literally had her picture in your promo video. But Tori, remember I told you the- spooks the computer was acting yeah. crazy it would not take it and she's mentioning mamie but go ahead back to mamie i, I hope you didn't lose your train of thought no no i was saying that you asked me what did i learn and i was saying that i met these women um trayvon martin's mom sabrina hmm. um, i had an opportunity to see something in them that you don't see in a woman who hasn't lost their child was there there's no amount of justice that i actually can re refill that void that's there um, and it, you don't, you can't, you can live past that and you can even thrive past it, but nothing can replace it. And so it get, it taught me to have more even compassion for my godmother, Tracy Lee, um, and other women who have lost their child to the hands of the police and um, rem reminding myself that, um, you know, I, although I have not experienced being a mother yet, um, I can't imagine what a mother has to go through and live through um, and who does she turn to? That is a stark reality is how does my godmother Tracy trust the police ever again in life? Who does she call if someone is coming through her door? Um, I am was not a fan of guns. I had never shot a gun until I, uh, except for one time, um, until I got to Strike Back. Strike Back, the show, the TV show. Yeah. My training taught me how to shoot a weapon, assault rifles, um, and, and two, I have to include assault, assault rifles as well. And so while I was working on- She's the, ready for she's ready uh, for the revolution. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk offline, go ahead. Offline, definitely. Yeah. Um, the the um, military advisor was from Texas and asked me if, you know, he was like, do you, do you own a gun? Is your really good shoot shooter? And I was like, no, I'm not a fan. I don't like them. I, I shot a gun one time and I don't like that kind of power. He was like, you are a single woman in America and you're in the industry um, that where you're a public person and you need protection. And this man told me this. He didn't say you need, he was like, if you don't, if you do not have protection, you need somebody to protect you. And I realized years later, because I held on to that seed and, and really thought about that. Um, my mom was not and not happy when I told her I was going to buy a gun, and we had to have that conversation because her mom gave her one when she was when she became a parent. Um, 
She felt like she needed protection. Um, but she had cop friends. I don't have any cop friends. Um, I don't have any, I don't have security. Um, if I do need security, I know who to contact. Um, I have male friends that are soldiers and um, in the nation. And um, I know I have backup and support, but until they get there, I became a licensed firearm carrier. Um, I do not have my concealed carry sure. license yet because it's, it's, it's the LA County and that is very difficult. I have been told by the people who sold me the gun, by the research that I've done, that they don't uh, approve licenses in the state of in the city county yeah you don't you don't need one in california not well you do what, what do you mean you don't need one not to purchase like i could protect myself in my home oh i got you you're talking about carry. Yeah, carry yeah yeah You're talking about carrying yeah yeah that's another yeah. license you have to get well, i was thinking a lot of people should start their own private security guard companies you know be a one-man show doing business as and now all of a sudden you're walking around with, you know with a blick on your on your you know Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Right. Just um, changing the paradigm. I understand. But we, you know, I don't support NRA, but uh, I do support your Second Amendment right. Yes. Me personally, uh, my name is Nine Mills. Um, <laughs> so for me, um, I always believe, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. But for you, it's different. But I'm just saying just conceptually for me. Um, I've been in a situation where if I had a gun, I think I've told the story, there'd be two dead black men now. And because I didn't have a gun, you know, I just jumped out of a moving car and ran away. So, it, it, you know, you'll never need to use a gun if you don't have a gun is, is kind of what I say. Well, you know, um, I am an advocate for education and training for firearms, period. Um, I do believe that there is power behind the trigger and it has to be used in a very wise way. Um, I, again, I learned that though. I didn't say I'm gonna get a gun and then learn the training. Right. Learn the training. You opted into the information. I'm response. I have to be responsible. Period. If just like I needed to be need to be responsible as a driver behind the wheel of a car, I need to Thanks. be responsible behind the trigger. And I, I and I'm a, not. I am not going. Like I don't brandish. I'm not that person. I, I need to protect myself. Who am Facts. I to call? When you have Facts. people coming in the wrong apartments. Like and this, this is coming from somebody who grew up with good experiences with toys. Yes, yeah. yes. That's why I have to, I, I would be remiss if I didn't admit that. Absolutely. You have uh, this, the social worker sister in Chicago, Anjanette Young, was just naked in her house. I'm, I'm like, this. you can't be no more vulnerable than naked. Yeah, we did that on this show. And um, we had Sandra Bland, the late Sandra Bland's attorney, uh, sat with us. And uh, he was talking about, you know, how the strength of Sandra Bland's mom and uh, condolences, uh, you know, to Mrs. Bland and just the dignity behind that. And it was a word I think you were describing when you said you were working with these mothers. I can imagine losing a child is would create an emptiness in any shape or fashion. But when <laughs> it's coming from people that you pay taxes to, yes, that you literally entrust to protect them and you know um what was the gentleman's name now these weren't policemen but one of them was an ex-policeman you know the one they tried to say he was going into an abandoned house and and uh the two guys in the pickup truck just shot him i don't remember the name yeah he's oh, like 21. The, uh, the, the, the jogger in, in atlanta yeah yes uh, yes but Yes, now it was an ex-cop and everything. But again, these are people who we trust to not be doing that. And so that's, I don't know. But I, I you know, I think all of that will be fixed in the next, over the next four years. One thing about uh, Donald Trump is, um, you know, he shed a light on all the roaches. And, um, you know, he made them feel like they can come out and post themselves on live doing 
all types of stuff. Um, and so now I guess the feds know who they are. So <laughs> big ups to Donald Trump. People needed to see. They did. Yeah. People needed to see because they were low to sleep. So uh, we're, we're, we're going to do some quick hits. So we're about done. Um, what, you got any projects outside of um, American Scan or anything? Any future projects or any dream projects that you want to talk about? Yeah, actually, um, co-created my own project with my writing partner, Sister Flynn. Her name is Jay Nicole Brooks. She's a playwright in Chicago. Um, she actually, um, she and I collectively um, had went to high school together and met in high school in drama. And so uh, she's worked and I've worked, done my work and we decided to work together on our own project. Obviously we wanted to, to be filmed in Chicago. So that is what I will be working on um, as I am going back to Animal Kingdom, which is on TNT. Um, I, this season, I was on last season. And so I'm coming back this next season for a few episodes. I'll, I'll promote it when I'm on it because I'm not in the beginning. But when, when I do come back, I'll promote it. People who are following, listening, watching, they'll, they can see it when I, uh, when I post. Hey, we'll pick up. So you're doing production and you guys are look are shooting in shy? Um, from, from any show that I work on that I create, it's going to be shot yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. That's what if, I'm talking about. If it's based <clears throat> in Chicago, it's going to be shot in Chicago. I feel that. That's beautiful. I feel thing. that. You're going to be. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be dealing with those teamsters. You know, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a hard job. I mean, yeah, that's a conversation we can talk about. <laughs> I I um now um, uh, these are the quick hits. These are just bang bang questions. Have you ever seen an unidentified flying object? Not that I know of. Have you ever seen anything supernatural, demons, angels, anything like that? Angels, absolutely, all around me. Wow. Have you ever seen any? Have you ever seen an alien? <laughs> um, <laughs> it, without the mask, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get you get that's you get interesting answers to that question. Yeah, you know, that's don't you? Because I mean, you know. Yeah, because uh, I think the answer is probably yes, and we probably yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah. How would you know? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I know the answer to this one based off what you're going to tell your nine-year-old self, but is there a God? Yes, I am. We are. All of us. Recommend your uh, favorite uh, Black restaurant. It, it it could be in Chicago, but it doesn't have to be. Black owned. Black owned right now, Jerky Jerk is in Chicago. Um, I can't I can't tell you the address off the top of my head. I can't think of it right now. Jerky Jerk. Hey, Self, can you uh, Google they that? Have to call, they have this drink called Strong Back. Strong Back? Um, just order a, the, a jar of the Strong Back. Is delicious. A jar? Yeah, that sounds like some place to check out, so. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> hey, we could have rolled through there with the late Uncle Joe, boy. A jar? Okay. Uh, 20, 2253 West Taylor. Jerky jerk. Oh, so West yeah. Loop. Yeah, it's the bomb. It's delicious. All right. Western, yep. Uh, rest of, uh, recommend a book. Um, you know, if you're going to say like a spiritual book, like the Bible or something, then I would ask you to recommend two. Mm. Um, oh, wow. Um, the Purpose Driven Life changed my life. I have, for some reason, the, the author is escaping me right now, but The Purpose Driven Life, uh, Conversations with God. Conversations yes. with God. Yeah, that was a great one. That they have one and two. I, yeah, I'm reading two. It's yeah, a, it's a and three. three and three. Yeah, I have the whole entire. Oh, collection. I didn't know about three. See, I'm glad I asked. All right, collection. Yeah, um, but I started. You know, I read one. I'm on two, um, but it's a book that you can read over a period of time. It's not. It's dense. It's a, it's that you have to be open and receptive to receive the material. 
Um, the other book I would say, um, I said Purpose Driven Life, Conversations with God. And right now I'm reading Stacey Abrams' book, Minority Leader, How to Lead from the Outside, which is a more, it's a um, career driven book. It's to drive the, your passion into a career, which is really something that's important to me. It's something that I talk to my cousins about. You know, you have a job, these are jobs. What's your passion? Cause you're not happy at this job. You know why I know you're not happy? Cause you're drinking every night. And you're, and you're late and you're calling off work and yeah, all types of stuff. Every single day you are- And, you, are and you, you enjoy the weekend way too much. <laughs> you look for- Absolutely. You yeah. think things that don't, that don't reflect joy in what you're doing. So you're saying uh, learning to, the book is, is about learning to capitalize off of that little light that's churning in you. Yes. Right. Learning to generate that into greenbacks. Yes. So purpose driven and life, right? Purpose driven life. Um, Rick and Warren. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good job on the fact check. Thank so you, sir. Thank you. All right. Well, um, anything that we didn't cover um, that you wanted to just add or discuss? Um, January 15th is when the film comes out, but the conversation should go well beyond the 15th. Uh, we have to have this conversation, this dialogue. We have to continue this conversation and this dialogue in a way that is really about progressive um, for us in our community, but also for this country because we're, we're not leaving, we're here. Uh, we have decided to raise our children here. And uh, if we're gonna do that, then we have to do it in a way that is progressive. Um, yeah. Um, one last thing, I appreciate you giving me this microphone and giving me an opportunity to share parts of me that I have not shared with any journalists or anyone publicly, um, particularly people in my city, because I love Chicago. Um, I will always love Chicago. The roots run very deep in me for my love for Chicago. Hey, um, and we appreciate you doing this. One self love and I we got a song we sing. Uh, this platform's your platform. This platform's my uh, platform. platform. From Chicago to Inglewood, California, Los Angeles, and the <laughs> Valley. <laughs> this platform was made for you and me. So you're our second. Like we've done countless uh, shows, and you're our second um, female silverback. Um, you know, the first one was personal friend of ours and you, my wife, you know, booked. So we're going to ask you to reach out and, and pay it backwards if you got a female silverback in mind. Because what we're doing is um, we're going to chop these videos up. So the, the, this whole thing is going to, you know, be an entire show. But then over time, you'll start seeing um, self-love and I'll start editing like 15 minute snippets. And it'll be about whatever you're covering you know, and, and so that's what we're doing. And our point is, is that it'll be in the cloud and maybe, you know, 75 years from now, how magnificent would it be, you know, for, you know, you know, one of our, you know, uh, progeny, you know, or, or just black children or any children to be able to see this, you know, imagine if we were looking at an actress from a hundred years ago, right. Talking about how it was to grow up in New York or Chicago at that time. So, that's why we ask these type of questions so that our history can be recorded as opposed to um, his story it being. Yes. As opposed to yes. No, <laughs> yes. Our story versus his story. Yes. Yes. But um, so we got uh, just, I don't know. Are, have you ever heard of the game? He's a rapper. Of course. <laughs> okay. Now the okay. game. Now this is me talking and I love the game. Um, he drops a lot of names in his shows and his records. And um, so we have a game we created called the game name game. And so I just throw you clues. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, I'm listening. No, I'm prepared for this one. Give me a All second. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. This is the game. 
This is the this is the game name game, and this is how we verify if people are truly from Chicago. Because a lot of cats, you know, they they be self, they be out here, right? They'd be like, where you from? I'd be like, from Chicago. I'd be like, oh, yeah. And I'd be like, where you from? They'd be like, Chicago. I'd be like, what part? And they'll literally say Rockford. And I'd be like, oh. <laughs> I'd be like, are you serious? That was you and you heard boy. me just say I'm from Chicago, and you're going to tell me. <laughs> yeah, I just say that. They'd be like, they'd be, yeah, I, I just say, say that because nobody here knows better. That's basically what they're saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, so that's the reality because you take Peoria. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, cool, huh? Then you gotta, Where? You gotta drop a name. Well, Richard Pryor was from there. You know? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> thanks to the game and other people from Compton, people know Compton, you know. And like you said, Richard Pryor's from there. You know, Rip, where are you from, people? You know that this is how conversation starts. But so most of these people will be from Chicago, famous Chicago people. If they're not, I'll give you that free hint. So you're gonna get a clue, and then you're gonna get, you know, you know. You'll figure it out. All right, here we go. Okay. Had a massive heart attack and died. This is a historical. Had a massive heart attack and died? Mm-hmm. Harold Washington? Wow. Ding, 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 ding. So if everybody don't believe me, yeah, the next clue was downtown Chicago City Library. She might. I'm surprised she knew that one. <laughs> I mean, off one clue. I, honestly, I'm surprised. All right, here we go. My mother loved, she knew he was going to become mayor before he, when she first saw him, she came back to LA. Um, at, she said, Yo, she Washington was a boss. Yeah. She saw man. it. She saw it in him. She was like, that man, who was he? She asked her girlfriend, who is that man? And he was, she was like, that's Harold Washington. She walked said, it like he talked it. He did. <laughs> Walked it like he talked it. It's to the point where so many people believe that they offed him. Yeah. Did. It makes sense. It supports all the other stuff. Man. <laughs> the man. The that whole city. Diet don't help. I'm not going to lie. Poor diet is a contributing factor. But did you, when you're, when the purpose they see is unifying that which they want to keep separate. The intentions become internal. It's a this is a state of we have to address this. This is real. facts. Well, the story was, yeah, he had like some heart issues, and but over the last two years before he passed, he had turned that around, had been running and eating right, but maybe the damage, you know, was already done. But that was how the story was written in the media, you know. So, but let's go ahead and run through this so we can let you go. Okay. All right, um, here we go. World record holder. Oh, world record. I would imagine. Oh, from Chicago. Who's from Chicago? World record. Aquafina. Do or die. Oh, oh, Lord Jesus. Hold on. Are you talking about? <laughs> are you talking about Twister? Ding, 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 ding. That was Twister. We were looking for. I have to. Can I just say this? Because this is shout out. That's the first job I ever booked was a Twister video. I just have to say. I I did. I meant to mention. I did see that as I was doing my research. And <laughs> so you met Twister. Was he cool? What's up with Twister? Was he? You know. Well, he's from Chicago. He was game recognized game. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard anybody say. You know, like if I mentioned Q-tip, people, oh, that, ah, <laughs> ah, that. but you mentioned Twister, you know, yeah, Twister, you know, yeah. All right, all right, here we go. <clears throat> Chicago Simeon. Oh, shoot. Kevin Garnett? Number 25. I, I, I don't think I'm going to get this one. There was a famous Hollywood dog actor with the name hold on famous was murdered before his senior basketball season i don't know we'll just give her this one now we were looking for benji wilson ben wilson oh yeah you know what yeah ben wilson we were looking for yeah, we're looking. We're uh, rest in peace, Ben Wilson. We're looking for Ben Wilson there. I do. I do remember. I do remember this. I shouldn't have given you that one. I shouldn't have given you. That one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I, I tested these. I had, did some of these with Tasia 
but I think she got that one. I think she got that one, but I was, I was learning. No, yeah. All right. All right. Here we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Kept the South side from burning to the ground during the riots, during the protests in 1968. This man kept crack off of the South side. 68. He was said to have unified social clubs citywide. I don't know that one. Founder of the El Rukin Nation. We were looking for Jeff for it. Yeah. We were looking for Jeff for it out there. Damn! Damn! I feel so ashamed. I feel so sad. I should know that. Uh, that I should know. Uh, well. Seriously? No, Benji. I felt I felt bad for giving it to you. You know what I mean? I was like, I probably shouldn't have gave her that one. GD out the app. Okay, here's one. <laughs> All right, here's one. Harvard <laughs> Law School grad. Oh, come on. You mean wait which one? You saying the Obamas? Michelle Obama. <laughs> Yeah. Barack's not from Chicago. Chicago, I know. I know he's not from Chicago. We like to make that clear. Uh, no, so he's blind, not from right? Chicago. Yes, I, we don't claim. I'd say she's from Chicago because she's from Chicago. But she's from Chicago. She I, grew up on the next block from where I'm at right now. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Mom still stays there. You know, she. You know, they still own it. She still stays there. It's like right on the next block. Like real talk. Yeah, no, I, I um I read about it and she has it in her book. Okay. Yeah, we grew up right here. All right, we got two more and then you're done. Okay. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> this is a free clue. This gentleman is not uh from Chicago. So that's two clues. It's a gentleman who's not from Chicago. Book of Eli. Glory. Oh, wait, no, don't hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Did you really give me this question? Book of <laughs> question. Hold on, here's the thing though. I'm See, like, you either insult people's intelligence you. or you give them something that you know what I mean? So yeah. Ask me, ask me about cornbread early meat. Don't ask me about this. <laughs> I don't know the well. Okay, I got one for you. I got one for you. All right. And I know about cornbread early me too. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Through the wire. Oh, shaka, 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 gone. Shaka, gone, shaka, gone. We can give you that as a bonus. Slavery was a choice. Oh. Yay. Yeah, but, you know, the first answer, well, Shaka Khan was saying through the fire. Wasn't she saying through the fire? Yeah, she was saying oh. through the fire. Kanye was saying through the wire. Well, okay. She I think Tasia's mom graduated high school with uh, Shaka Khan. Good friends with her. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, okay. Okay, here's one for you. Okay. G-Unit. From Chicago? Oh, my bad. <laughs> this one is not from Chicago. That's a, the lead in. <laughs> this is not from Chicago. G-Unit. You talking about, about Fitty? Oh, did he say it? <laughs> Notorious name dropper. Oh, the game. <laughs> We're looking for the game in the game name game. Right. All right. So, so, so one last one. One last one. This is <laughs> this is Chicago. This is Chicago all day, and I don't expect you to know this. Um, you know, I don't want to sound like a you know, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, misogynist man, but. I'm it's already going to get shit that it's, I it's, get. it's sports related. So I'm already going to get shit about Benji. I'm already going to get shit about Jeff. It's okay. I'm ready for uh, it. Bring it. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Notorious, horrible tipper. <laughs> From Chicago? He's a Chicago. Uh, it's a, yeah. Chicago. He's not from Chicago, but uh, yeah. Best sidekick ever. Wait, hold on. He's a sports figure. He sat out. Oh, you wait. He sat out the. You talking part. about Dennis Rodman? He sat out the last 0.04 seconds of a playoff game, pouting. Oh, 
Scotty Pippen. <laughs> wow. No Pippin Tippin, baby. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, we're gonna end it on a high note. That was good. That was good. One thing I've learned is uh, end it on a high note. I learned that from watching Time Field. <laughs> <laughs> Go out on a high note. I, uh, you you would think. Wait, we have to talk about this. We have to address this. You think Scotty Pippen's? You think his temper was worse than than Dennis Rodman's? Is that what you're saying? When you say no, worse no. than forever. Oh, uh, Tipper. I should have been oh, more clear. Tipper! Yeah, he's, oh, he's no, you and, and you know what? No, no, oh, she I thought I said Tipper. Yes, oh, okay. But, it is but that's what, no, I'm not going to rant. Uh, he's known as No Tipping Pippin. Pippin. Oh, that's whack. Isn't that whack? Oh, whack as hell. That's, that's whack. That's just. Mm-mm. That's beyond whack. It's disrespectful. Especially someone who comes from poverty, right? It's the service, though. It's the you're paying for a service. It's disrespectful. And the experience itself is something that that you can't take for granted. You, and you know how bad it is when you come in there. Someone is serving you. Yes. And, and how you treat someone who's serving you means that you don't have a servant's heart. That's that's the unfortunate thing, but it's still whack. You and your whole they're not just serving him. He comes through with a whole entourage of people. That's Man. for everybody. That's that's <laughs> any man 10, 10 15 people and they don't tip well don't forget to reach out that's a that's a reflection of how you see people who serve you and yeah. that's mm. character that's a character thing you have to those people who have that thing that's their journey but that's a character thing because someone who serves you is from their heart even if they don't know it even mm. if they don't like doing it it's from their heart they have to that's that's how we get to god that is how we connect Man, a being of service. Man, and I'm not even the type of person that says that. That says, "Hey, Milana, I just saw you on the big screen in that great movie. You know, I want you to tip me, you know, fifteen hundred dollars. You know, just do the standard fifteen to twenty percent. That's all I'm Man. asking. I mean, you know, that. I mean, that. That's all I'm asking from Warren Buffett, right? Hey, yeah. Warren Buffett, good day, good day, good day. Fifteen, twenty percent." But if Warren Buffett walks out of there and leaves five cents on there, I'm sitting right here on this live talking about Warren Buffett. That's right. I digress. Any big ups or um, shout outs that you want to give? Um, Oh, man. Shout out to black men right now. Um, Always and forever. Man. Yes. Big ups. Yes. All right, well, we don't uh, kick any uh, female silverbacks out. Uh, This was an awesome experience. So Amazing. uh, Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it, fellas. Thank you so much, Tori. Nine. Um, This was a pleasure, and um, I'll see you soon. And I'll get you the videos and round uh, round up the girls for us so we can keep this going. Okay. Appreciate that. Look forward to you coming back and blessing us again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Man, self. Yep. So once again, massive expansion, right? Yeah, man. Like jewel at the jewel at the jewel. We ain't ain't really kind of know what to expect, but this, as every show, when I think I know what to expect, there's just. The expansion just just took over off. It went way beyond what I expected. Wait till you see the movie. Oh man! Oh, I had a question about the Spike Lee. I wanted to ask if she uh, rode on the slide thing. Oh, oh the... <laughs> you know, and he gets the uh, yeah that that, the that, that one scene the scene where they're moving. Hey. It. Hey, hey, get the teamsters off that boom there. there of love. <laughs> you and Jazzy go stand on there and we're gonna shoot the scene with you guys rolling. Yeah. <laughs> just, just rolling along and, and nobody's walking, everybody's stiff, it's moving and, and they're oh, talking man. and it's hey. moving. No, no, that's great, man. You know oh, I wish you would have, I would you I wish you would have asked that. I would have laughed so I, hard. I meant to ask it. You, you you know that scene in Belly, man, when T Boz was uh walking down the street talking to that dark skinned girl. <laughs> and they say we're gonna move to Africa and I'm going to the mall. Give me some shoes <laughs> first. You remember the bad fat bad. Bro, I wish Spike Lee had directed that and put them on that slide thing. Bro, they should have if they were on that slide thing, bro, that oh, would shit. Oh, that would have been one of the best things 
Uh, big ups to everybody doing what they do, though. Yeah, man. I, I, I like it. You know, it's it's a trademark out the app. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I know it's going to happen. It, you'd be like, oh, there it goes. There it yeah. Is. And if I'm watching that stuff and she's on the slide thing. We, <laughs> bro, you know you've made it, right? Think about it. How would you feel, self, if you're on the slide? Even if you was an extra, I'd feel Lee, great. You should, you I'd feel go. great. Be like on that. He should run a regular guy. You can be on the slide. <laughs> Shouldn't he? In my next movie, send five dollars here for charity, and we'll pick a name out of a hat. How would that feel? Man. You'd be on the slide. Put five dollars on the film. <laughs> <laughs> Get <Getting Man>. charity. <laughs> hey, but uh, just be people don't know how instrumental. Um, Mars Blackman was to uh oh man Michael Jordan the whole marketing I mean seriously yeah seriously yeah. they take that genius away I don't know if he was writing all that Mars Blackman or whatever he was doing must be the shoes and all that and had Jordan in yeah. the hood and I don't know who's behind that I have to believe it was Spike Lee I'd have to believe it was Spike Lee with all his directorial genius yeah. and writing um, probably yes I, yes because hey, seriously now for me, I knew every bit of who Michael Jordan was when he was at North Carolina. Oh, my God. Okay? But we weren't the average basketball fan. No. But for America, boy, Mars Blackman. Because I was like, well, who's this guy? <laughs> huh? He had one film out at the time, right? Man, and it was like, he's 40. I thought he was like 18 years old. <laughs> Remember that? Somebody's like, he's 40. How old he was at the time? Yeah, but big ups to uh, Spike Lee and everybody that's uh, doing what they doing. Bro, I... I, <laughs> I don't think he was 40. But, <laughs> but he was older than what I would have thought. Now, you have to admit. Right, 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 man. We yeah. were younger, younger. I'm, I'm just <laughs> yeah, laughing. Yeah. I'm laughing yeah. because of the view, because I can see how you can say he was 40. But <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was grown, man. And I was like, oh, I thought he was, yeah. you know, I thought he was 20, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, Big ups. Big, Big ups. ups. Big ups. Hey, but uh man, bro. So man, tomorrow. Oh man. Yeah. It just don't stop. We got the law. Yes, sir. Doctor Doc- law. Law. That's right. So uh so we got a um promo video. If uh we want you guys to please subscribe. Uh, we're changing the city at 9,999 subscribers. Nothing violent. Uh, but we're going to move the city. So we need you guys to subscribe, please. And uh, the utmost importance. Yeah. And you can watch great lives moving forward. You'll get alerts. If you hit the bell, hit all. Cool. You can run it whenever you're ready. And you can see great lives like the one we got set up for tomorrow. I hope I put it on there. Did I put it on there? Uh, nope. Get out of here. Uh, go to the 13th. Uh, that makes perfect sense. I don't think it's there. It's got to be there. Yeah, it's there, but I never moved it to the other one. Oh, My bad, no. Hey, this is live TV. Guess what? It happens. Yeah, but we're two point guards. We should be able to anticipate the un- the unanticipatable. That it takes to be the point guard. Three right. steps ahead. For those who don't know. I mean, it's the hardest uh, position to score from, in my opinion. Some say it isn't because you've always got the ball, but, you know, when you're coming down, the whole defense is what. That's what I don't, I don't have that either. Okay. Well, hold on. I'll, I'll shoot it over to the 13th here. So uh, what am I looking for? The law promo? Yeah. Same to playlist. So I put it on the 12th. I hope it's public. So you have to refresh your, your screen on the 12th and it should pop up as long as that video is public. Yeah, I was going to uh, 
have some names for herself, some other shit. Put it at, at the end. That's yeah, it might be at the at. very bottom. It usually default. Oh, let me go and see if it went on there. Oh, south side. Yeah, it's it, it's there. Yeah. All right, hold on. Yeah, so this is what we got for tomorrow, you guys. Uh, dental health. Poor dental health has been linked to strokes, heart attacks, um, just a myriad of um, arthritis, uh, bronchitis, a myriad of health. It's the front line to everything. And um, we're underserved, of course. Man. Is that by design? Absolutely. We know. Man, in this promo, this lady was saying 70% of the uh, poor black kids have cavities. Kids. Absolutely. So self, when you're looking at the long-term effects of periodontal disease and all of that, this is why we're hit play. You can go ahead and hit play. Some of us is genetically too, because it's passed down through the DNA after the parents and ruin their teeth. You, they you're going to have to hit play. There you go. Yeah. Facts. Facts. So. Yeah, I was just blabbing to we to, to we got Help! to get Here. Oh, take my hand. Ah, come on. <laughs> You're gonna fall unless you take my hand. No, give me your other hand. Oh, my other hand isn't strong enough. You take my little hand. No, get it away from me. Take it. Take my hand. No. <laughs> Hilarious. Mental health problems for the African American community. I think. God, the biggest problem is that there's still a deficit between the African-American community and the general population. Yes. World yeah. traveler, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of, if you were a dentist, yeah, I'd want to hear from a dentist. That's what we got. Uh, oh. Oh. take a look at a, a few statistics. We always hear about the 50% of the children, uh, and I'm go to children because that's my focus here, um, that are cavity free. But we don't hear too much about the 50% who aren't. And specific to the African American community, there are about 60% of African American children uh, who have cavities. And I think the real sad part of it is um, there's another group of poor children which uh, have like 70% is their statistic. But for you guys who don't know, um, um, what we do is um, health, and um, we have a, um, a urban uh, black health series um, that we run. Self Love and I, we, we've done one. It probably got deleted. And self, I'm gonna comment on that deletion. Um, anyway, yeah, we did it on water. We did a water study, and so now um, the next one's gonna be on dental. Yo, uh, Dr. Law here. Uh, hate to interrupt your regularly scheduled program. So this is this is the new space. we um, this is the going to be the new entrance way, the front area for the reception. I have a little coffee uh, place right there. This will be the door into the clinic area. 
Uh, we got the clinic rooms over there. And like I said, this is one treatment room right here. And we got another treatment room here. Another treatment room here. Another treatment room. here and a fifth treatment room here. we have this was going to be my office this spot right here um, back door for the uh, to get out the back cave quickly back here and we got a small staff room a sterilization area um, small mechanical room here uh, I'm going to have the compressor and vacuum and then a the little area for my uh, x-ray unit. Uh, so that's what's going on right now. Good Brothers, uh, in response to some of the queries last time, uh, they actually used three different trucks for the cement. So did not have a problem with the quality of the cement, uh, the quality of the set or what have you. And um, everything's shaping up nicely um, supposedly still looking at March 1st so uh, we'll be hanging in there trying to make things happen um, and just keeping the noobs abreast of what's going on take care God bless yo hey, Zen. hey. right hey I'm just gonna say and put it out here right now this is my dentist so this is the best dentist I've ever encountered in You're biased. my life. I, I You're am biased. not I'm not biased by because that the noop, it was a noop that was my dentist before him. Okay. I've no, I've actually heard this. You know, I'm being yes, this guy is the most conscientious and the most uh, gentle. And he'll pump you full yes, of uh, yes, painkillers. Yes, he's not yes. he's not shy with he, those. What, yeah, when he's working with you, he <laughs> kind of feels what you're going through. Like uh, to certain, uh, is that bothering you? Like it'd uh, be on the it'd be on the border of bothering me. He's like, is that bothering you? You know. What so I mean? you're talking mild disco. <clears throat> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy, buddy, buddy. It's time to bring that. It's uh, tomorrow. We're going to go into it. Um, what's good for, you know, dental health. Uh, this is part of, this is part two of the self-love show series on black health. Man. Absolutely. Man, we all got to, you know, raise our sleeves up. Um, we're on the bottom. And um, if you guys are anything like me, self-love is seeing me. The best part of when you get a new video game is being a worse at it. Because, you know, you look forward to all the heart. Enjoy the journey. That's what it is. Because we can only go up from here as a collective. So, yeah. you know, uh, let's do it. Yeah. Let's move. Let's move as one. I know they say we can't do that and all that. Who cares what they say? Let's vibrate love and let's move as one and move. Absolutely. I, you know, can't say that any better, you know, and um, those of us who can't move, right, then, you know, what they have to do, um, we'll, we'll work with the ones that are moving with us, right, That's so? That's right. That's you know. right. Like minds think alike and can move in conjunction. Facts. 
Facts. Man, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. And uh, once again, uh, big ups to uh, Tasia for uh, linking that up. Big ups, big ups. Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. ups to our guest, man. She was phenomenal. Big, I, big, yes, bigger ups to uh, really enjoyed her. Milana. You enjoyed that, huh, Self Love? Yes. Yeah. I, I really did. Yeah, I'd, I'd say magnanimous. Yeah. And she, you know, she spoke her truth and she spoke it unfiltered, hey. un- unapologetically. Hey, hey, man, she wore it on her chest. She she came out there like Lovey Smith. Yeah. I we know. get off the I bus know. running. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I enjoyed that. I was like, okay. Hey, that was fantastic. You know what I mean? Yeah, because, you know, how they talk about how actors are or can be and, you know, actresses out there get full of themselves, did a few shows or whatever, you know what I mean? And she was down to earth and it was a beautiful experience. Yeah, yeah. You probably should have brought that myth up when you had the chance. I know you didn't think about it. I didn't think about it either, but that's a myth. (laughs) You know what I mean? But you're right. That, That is, you know, and... I, I, what happens is, is they highlight the ones who make it and who get so big and act like jerks. But you know, yeah, it's like anything else. So if you're not gonna make it very far like that, you know, you're making oh, connections man. the whole time. You know, yeah. you generally, work, the, generally uh, the jerks don't act like jerks with us anyway. But you know, well, generally, no, no they, you know, they get what they get. Oh well, you know. Trolls get old, so hey, the Mills bill is 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 ratified and valid. Doesn't matter if you're Donald Trump or um, you know Jim Hobo on on the street corner. Yeah, facts. Uh-huh. Yeah, for any reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to break down the uh, just the science of 